come up and hopefully answer a few questions for us that we have from our last meeting. Hello. Right. Mr. Levine. Oh, Todd Richards, Levine. Larry Levine. All right, nice to meet you. All right, at our last meeting, um, we have some questions about AR. I think all the dimension requirements were met, the furniture requirements were wet, met. Uh, the questions we had were access, I believe, is one of the questions. Um, or retaining wall. I believe part of the ANR process to describe both of those on the property. The um, we have made provisions on the plan you see before yep. you. The retaining walls are not affected or effective on the non sub lots up here. There are some slightly way back here. Okay. But they, we didn't see the importance of having them because it really didn't affect the proposed non sub plan up here. Okay. Mr. Chairman, may I? Certainly. Um, I, I've actually had the pleasure of actually years and years ago working at this job. Mm -hmm. On the upper driveway, mm -hmm. there's a retaining wall across the entire front of what will be the remaining lot mm -hmm. all along the driveway. Um, the wall's about three foot, three and a half foot in height, and that's what we were um, concerned about. Tell me your concerns. As you, well, as you come in the driveway, there's a retaining wall across the entire thing. Um, Are you talking on Prospect Street? On Prospect Street. Mm -hmm. Now, one of my concerns is just that part of our requirements mm -hmm. require that a plan show fences, walls, um, proposed easements, easements. Okay. And again, they don't show them. Um, in my yeah, instance, all I'm asking for is to show what's required of the subdivision rules and regulations. All right, with with your indulgence, we yep. can revise this plan that you see and put that retaining wall along Prospect Street. Um, there's actually if two I may, there's the right. other thing I noticed um, by looking the other day, it also requires setbacks. Um, you have side yard setbacks, but there's no frontage setbacks. I'd like those included on it. Like I said, I mean, we have a simple list of 12 things. And it seems like each time we get a new plan, there seems to be less and less. And I'm not saying it's anything, you know, with your client or anything. I just, I'd like to see complete plans, I especially understand. when they're being filed. We, we didn't do that those because these structures have been in existence for many years. And in fact, um, showing the setbacks might be somewhat misleading because as you know, we used, when these were constructed, they didn't have to, um, have the dimensional setbacks required in the zone because there are houses here that are closer, and so we were able to use the average. The average, yes, that's correct. Right. Yep. We can put those in. I mean, that's the reason that's with, because we thought that would be misleading if we put it in, and and the board may come under scrutiny, even though in a non sub plan, not an issue exactly. technically. Right. But we can put those. Thank yeah, you. I think I'd rather have that than somebody say, why is it so close and where's the numbers? Um, it's a lot easier to explain the real reason rather than somebody go, why is that not there? Okay. So, Just so you understand yeah, that it doesn't mean, I think in that zone, it's 50 foot setback. Right. I think so. And you can find 50 foot. Right. Yeah, because I think topography doesn't really uh, help that situation because it drops off substantially right. quickly. Right. Now, nice. With, with the driveway, mm -hmm. um, Obviously, from the looks of it, it cuts across. Is there going to be an easement issued so that that driveway can be continued to be used? And I, I'm glad you asked. Well, my next question to the board <laughs> is, can we grant an easement because then that will become a common driveway for two separate lots? I don't, I don't know. know if the town allows common driveways, and that's. I don't know if that falls under our purview. First and foremost, mm -hmm. first and foremost. Well, let me answer the <coughs> question this way. Sandra Mayberry owns this parcel. Yep. She owns this parcel. Mm -hmm. She owns them both in fee simple. She has total ownership. Right. As long as she owns both budding lots, there's no reason to create the easement. I've advised her already, one day when we convey, if she conveys one of the lots, it would be at that time that an easement would be created. It would be created if she wanted to retain the use of the driveway, her as well as the new owner. But since it's now in 
fee ownership and she it's a merger concept there's absolutely no need to have an easement created at this point where would be the accessibility yeah, from prospect street to same the lot? same way so there would be no accessibility from the new frontage that's created well there is now there is now there is now the, the Actually, this? that's from the adjacent lot that's being created. That's that's correct. Mm -hmm. So what you're you're basically proposing is this frontage of 144.53 feet, yep. which would be the remaining. Yep. Has frontage. Well, the only accessible area would be on the side lot then. No problem. If that retaining wall comes all the way across. It, no problem. She still has the legal right because she owns both parcels. And there's no reason and no necessity to create an easement at this point. Also, 215 Prospect Street, at one time, the driveway was directly from Prospect. All right? This was created because of the slope there. Okay? So, to answer the question, they will continue to use the driveway as it's shown. There's no reason to create because she owns both parcels create the easement. If she were to convey that this parcel or this parcel, at that point, I would advise her to create an easement and have an agreement regarding maintenance, insurance, etc. But um, the, the, to answer the question, being a lawyer for a second, there is no easement in being right now. Right. Okay? There's no necessity to the terms of approval process to create one. Right. If there was an easement, we would show it to you. Okay? But she owns everything. She could put a driveway back here if she wanted without creating a document. My concern is when you two lots under an A&R. Yeah. Um, the requirement under A&R is frontage and accessibility to no. a buildable portion of the lot. No, it's not. Frontage on a public way. That's it. And the court actually in court cases has held that it has to be accessible to the buildable portion of the lot. It is accessible. And, uh, I, that's part of my concern is that it's accessible right when now. When it'll the plan be accessible doesn't show tomorrow. everything it's very difficult to know if it is or not. And you ought to ask your attorney. What I'm telling you, I'm sure that he will repeat. Your concern is if this was going to be sold. And we would have the same concern. And at that point, it would be created. But, but, but this, is, this driveway is your access. It's basically like saying in a subdivision you can create lots and not have to worry about putting a road in. Um, they have the frontage, but what happens when um, the frontage is on a highway, which is not accessible, but yet, such as in uh, the case in Nantucket, where they wanted to do a common driveway, or such as the case where um, even though there was frontage, there was a zoning bylaw that stated that you could not put a driveway within 1,000 feet of another driveway. With, with, with that, basically what ended up happening is even though they had the frontage, it was unusable frontage. They couldn't get to the buildable portion of the lot from that frontage. So the court in that case, from what I can tell, said that they did not have access to it and the ANR wasn't applicable. I mean, I may, like I said, I, I'm just going... First of all, you have a statement here mm -hmm. that you aren't saying it meets zoning requirements. Okay? Two, the existing building that's on the lot being created on the northerly side mm -hmm. is going to be converted to a single-family residence. I did see that on the new okay. uh, plans. Right. And I think for tonight's sake, I mean, because there are a couple issues, I don't think we can approve it, but I think that would give us time to check with our attorney okay. to ask him. I That's think fine. it's a very simple question. That's fine. Um, I, don't, I, I, I understand the, your questions, but under the, this process, your questions are somewhat irrelevant. You may have requirements okay. within your regulations to show any easements and stone walls. 
what your approval or non-approval of a sub a non-sub plan is not based on the accessibility issue because it's frontage on a public way and it has already in existence the driveway I'll leave it with that. All right. Thank you. Thank Anybody you. else want to add anything? No, I think uh, we've got time to do this time, research on this. And, uh, yeah, go ahead. We have time to do some research on right. this, and I, I need to refresh my memory <clears throat> okay. on my A&R training to make sure right. that uh, I've got the right wording. I don't have that pile okay. with me tonight. As far as the setbacks and walls, you're, that's not going to be an issue for you no. as far as your, your no. client goes, no. right? No. Um, do we need a motion to continue? I would well, suggest that you request an extension, an agreeable extension, for you to make your decision so you don't agree to. Okay. Um, Do I have a motion to, or can I get a motion to extend the a &R process till next Tuesday? Or, I'm sorry, two weeks from today. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank Do you, you want the revised plan before? Yes, please. Okay. Yes. That way, if there's anything missing, we can... Yep. All right, and we, uh, if we have to show the town attorney, okay. we back then. All right, thank you. Thanks. Nice, nice to meet you. Likewise. Larry, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is the legal members. Take care. All right, next up we have a special permit and site plan review for a uh, gas station and convenience store on the corners of Chestnut Street and Shaker Road. Um, the applicants here would like to step up and give us a presentation, and uh, we're going to ask some questions amongst the board. We're going to open it up to the public, um, then we'll bring it back to the board for final comments and or questions. Good evening. Good evening. Can I have you guys have your name and addresses, please, for the record? Excuse me, Legal minutes first. Let me get legal minutes. Yeah, I want to get the names and edges for the record, or you want to do the minutes first? Right, go use the minutes. All right, we got a couple things to read in the record. And I'm going to ask everybody to speak uh, loudly and clearly so we can the mics can pick it up for the folks at home. Mr. I Richards? guess that's me. That is you, sir. <laughs> East Long Meadow Planning Board Public Hearing. The East Long Meadow Planning Board will hold a public hearing on March 11, 2014 at 6 o'clock in the Town Hall Meeting Room, 60 Center Square, East Long Meadow, Massachusetts, for a special permit and site plan review submitted by Chalmers Enterprises, LLC. The proposed project is for the construction of a gas lean station with convenience store located at 275 Chestnut Street and 227 Shaker Road. The East Long Meadow Planning Board will hold a public hearing. That's okay. Save yourselves a few minutes. Yeah. Um, site title, untitled. Site location, 275 Chestnut Street. Applicant is Chelmers Enterprises, LLC, 1 Marsh Place, Springfield, Mass, 01144. Owner is Chelmers Enterprises, LLC, same address. Security system, exterior lighting, yes. Interior lighting, yes. Alarms, yes. Recommendations, yes. Exterior lighting should be installed to minimize the impact of surrounding residential properties. Signage, yes. Any sign should be installed so they do not impact the visibility of vehicle operators entering and exiting the site. Consideration should be given to, on any signs impact on visibility at the intersection. Traffic impact, traffic study, a traffic study was submitted with this application. Location of entrance, exit, Shaker Road, on west side at address and Chestnut Street on north side at address. Traffic volume increase, yes. The submitted traffic study indicates an estimated of 1,950 trips entering and exiting the site on a weekday basis. <clears throat> traffic control changes, yes. The site plan indicates only one curb cut on each of the streets will be left open. A review of the location indicates sufficient distance from the actual intersection on Shaker Road for the proposed driveway to function without any significant problems. However, the proposed driveway located on Chestnut Street is located too close to the intersection to allow existing vehicles an opportunity to safely enter traffic flow. The tri driveway connections with 
Chestnut Street, approximately one vehicle length back from the stop line. A potential exits for vehicular traffic to utilize the driveways at the site to circumvent traffic stop for the traffic light to access westbound flow on Chestnut Street from Shaker Road. The proposed sidewalk connection to the bike path should be connected at a point back from the roadway and behind the island with a ballard. <clears throat> Center lines for both driveways and arrows on pavement to indicate lanes for entering and exiting the site. Parking spaces along the north side are indicated in traffic study, but none are on the site plan. Police service impact it is estimated there will be an increase in police response due to this project. Additional recommendations and comments. Any plantings should be located so as not to interfere with vehicular operators visibility entering and exiting the site. Additional consideration should be given to vis visibility at the intersections. This too. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's we're all set with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you want to read that? Yep. Okay. Uh, East Long Meadow Planning Board, Robin McDonald, Director of Planning and Zoning and Conservation. Dear Planning Board members, we are writing to you, the East Long Meadow Planning Board, to ask for your support for the purpose Propose new gas station convenience store to be located at the corner of Chestnut Street and Shaker Road. We are unable to attend the meeting on Tuesday night, March 11th, as we are both out of town. L.E. Belcher is a well-respected company that operates first-class stores in a greater Springfield area. As residents of East Long Meadow for the past 30 years, we feel the added taxes and the convenience of having a station at the intersection is long overdue. Thank you for taking the time to consider our support for this project. We believe it will benefit the community in the long run. Regards, uh, Michael and Grace McCarthy, 73 Prospect Hills Drive, East Long Meadow. Uh, memo to Planning Board, uh, Memo to Robin McDonald, Director of Planning and Zoning from Frank Moriarty, Assistant Town Engineer regarding Chalmers Enterprises, LLC. As a result of the roundtable meeting held on February 26, 2014, the following plan changes have been made in response to the Department of Public Works concerns. The curb circles at the entrance and exits are now shown to be granite radii. The sidewalk along Chestnut Street has been extended to the rail trail. Notes have been added to the plan to maintain the existing concrete bounds. The access, the access uh, egress driveway on Chestnut Street has been shifted approximately 15 feet westerly away from the intersection. However, concerns regarding safety and traffic flows remain. Painted stop bars and center line striping have been shown on the plan. An asphalt lip has been added to the Shaker Road driveway to deter water from entering the site. A great change was designed at the Chestnut Street driveway to defer, deter service water from the site onto Chestnut Street. A catch basin was added to this location. The, uh, this department requested on-site soil testing to confirm design and assumptions regarding the drainage system. The system was designed without so soil evaluation. We cannot approve the drainage design without those logs. Traffic study, please refer to the memo attached from Robert Parent, PE to um, Mrs. Robert McDonald, Director of Planning and in, uh, Planning in the Planning Board, dated March 10th, 2014. If you have any questions, feel free to contact this office. And attached is a letter. Robin, I uh, this is to Robin. Robin, I have had I had the opportunity to complete preliminary review of the Alfred Benson traffic study received late in the day on Friday, March 7th as we all personally observed traffic at the intersection during the PM peak period during that evening. As discussed at our roundtable meeting this morning, I believe the study is lacking in a number of areas and requires updating before acceptance to the planning board. The study contains no discussion of the negative impacts that the development would have on safety in the area of the intersection and most critically, the existing bike path. 
The study should also consider the impacts of vehicle traffic from La Florentino, which is located directly across the street from the proposed development, and Lennox Saw, which is located just beyond the proposed development across the bike path. The study only considers the impact of the development on the intersection uh, capacity and level of service, which is only part of our concerns regarding the project. There is no question that the development will increase the potential for vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to pedestrian collisions in the area and the application should be required to evaluate these impacts and propose reasonable mitigation measures. Based on a review of the ITE trip generation criteria, the study underestimates the impact of the development on the function of the existing intersection. The study uses the least conservative of the two applicable ITE trip generation criteria for convenience store gasoline station projects. Use of the more conservative criteria appears to be most applicable to this to the proposed project since the planned co-branding use of the building will make the convenience store a standalone vehicle destination instead of just an accessory to the gas station. The updated traffic study incorrectly states the convenience store size to be 2,320 square feet, probably a uh, um, typographical error from the previous study which reported the size at 4,230 square feet. The plan submitted to the town indicate the first floor of the building will be 4,000 square feet with a basement of unspecific unspecified size. The applicant should confirm the proposed square footage of the basement and add this to the first floor value to provide a total proposed building square footage value. Trip generation rates should be based on the total square footage unless the applicant can conclusively demonstrate that a portion of the basement square footage is not used to support the first floor area in the same matter, <laughs> manner that the storage space will typically be counted in the total square footage of a single store, story convenience store. Personal, op personal observations on the evening of March 7th suggest the northern Shaker Road approach to the intersection functions at a level of service D, not C, as calculated in the updated study. The query length on a typical Friday p.m. peak was in excess of 800 feet and took multiple light cycles to clear. This downgrade to the Shaker Road approach, LOS combined in the LOS D calculated by the applicant for the Chestnut Street Eastern approach may result in an overall downgrade of the intersection LOS 2D during p.m. peak. The impacts of the proposed development will likely increase as a result of the cha excuse me, change in the LOS as well as an increase in tip trip generation rates discussed above. Also, the discuss also as discussed, the planning board should keep in mind that the use of the average daily traffic ADT data, as is commonly in studies of this type, will result in traffic volumes that are greater than estimated during many peak periods and volumes less than estimated during other periods. Lastly, I understand there is an applicant that the applicant's engineer for the updated study was unavailable to visit the intersection during peak vehicle periods. I recommend that the site be visited by an engineer at a similar time as did so my observations to be confirmed. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, Bob Parent, PE, Superintendent of Public Works, Town Engineer. Nothing else to read? <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, gentlemen. Good evening. My name is James Martin. I'm a lawyer with the law firm Robinson Donovan with offices at 1500 Main Street in Springfield. And uh, I represent Chalmers, one of the, uh, the applicant here tonight. Chalmers is a real estate holding entity that uh, is owned by the Davis family. The Davis family is, I think, well known to most of you here in East Long Meadow, former owners of American Saw and developers of Great Woods and uh, initially the uh, permitting uh, uh, owners of uh, the fields at Chestnut. Uh, <clears throat> we have a group of people here tonight that I'd like to introduce you to. The Davis family is represented by Drew Davis here. 
uh, and I, I'm their attorney. Uh, we have uh, our uh, two engineers here, Mark Smith. Uh, Mark is uh, uh, very experienced in terms of designing gas stations uh, throughout New England. He's with the Benesh Company. And then we have Steve Allman. Steve Allman is a certified traffic engineer. And Steve, uh, as you'll hear through our, our narrative, was brought into this process to do the studies that the town requested during the various roundtables and discussions. Um, you know, the Davis family's owned this parcel for a long time. For people know, remember, it's been vacant since uh, Mr. Davis Jim tore down country corners uh, quite some time ago. Uh, and for a long time, as they've looked at what to do with that property. They've been looking for what they thought was a, a, a good use for themselves, for the town, uh, and balancing that with the right partner. And um, they uh, reached a conclusion that this uh, there was a need for a service station and a convenience store, this, this location in towns. Uh, and uh, they sought out uh, a partner to develop this because they're not gas station operators. And they were uh, pleased to uh, find the L.E. Belcher Company. They are a local company. Uh, they are uh, here represented tonight by Ed Huff, the president, uh, right here. And uh, they have David Ryan. David's right there. And uh, I know we also have Nate. Where's Nate? Nate? Nate Dale right there. And they're represented by Jim Shields, their counsel. And Davis family uh, chose them in large part because they know Mr. Huff, they know Mr. Ryan, they've known him for years, they're a local company, they knew their, their high integrity, they own a dozen gas stations in the area, they've built them all, they've operated them all, and they felt that they, um, you know, would be a fine operator because, you know, it's a legacy for them, too, to have uh, uh, something that they can be proud of. So uh, we then, uh, you know, moved forward with this project, hired Mark uh, at, to do a design for the station. And um, we brought it to the town informally, uh, met with Frank and Robin, and got some excellent feedback back in, I think it was November or December. Uh, Mark revised the plans, and then we set about uh, filing the plans for site design review. And we had a, a, a lively round table the first time around, and uh, got excellent feedback. I mean, uh, uh, you know, and it's a great thing that the town has this system because it you know, lets you vet a lot of things before Bless you. Before you, uh, you know, get to the public hearing, and so we vetted a lot of things and got a lot of feedback, and um, a lot of the things you heard about uh, from Mr. Morandi's report were done. The, you know, some change in the granite curbs, some flow issues, um, and you know, some back pack lighting, moving the handicap space. Uh, I, I think we've gone through the uh, initial list, and every change was made to the plans at that time <coughs> that were requested by the town. The issue remained traffic, and at that first round table, we uh, had submitted a traffic study uh, by a company out in Westfield that has done traffic studies for various projects here in Westfield. Uh, the superintendent asked for a traffic engineer analysis, not just a count. Fair enough. Yeah. If I may not to interrupt you, uh, the past superintendent or the new one? Current, current okay. superintendent. This, right. this, this round table occurred in January after okay. the change okay. to, to Bob. Bob, is, Bob was president. Just to clarify that. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the initial meetings were with the old administration. The, uh, the round table meetings were with the new administration. Okay. And so he asked for uh, certain specific studies and, and uh, to be done by a certified, qualified uh, engineer. So Steve was hired. Steve works at Benesh as well. They are a full service engineering company. And Steve did his analysis. And we've submitted that to the town. It's a very detailed an uh, analysis. We had Steve specifically do every uh, test an analysis that uh, Mr. Parent asked for, uh, including intersectional analysis. Uh, fortunately, he had the software and it was able to work under high time pressure uh, to get it out. And I won't, you know, uh, pretend to uh, present the report to him. He will. But, you know, when you boil it all down, the data supported the analysis and the design that we had laid out uh, initially. Uh, keeping in mind that we have already cut, closed two curb cuts in this analysis, keeping in mind that some of the changes that were requested, such as the driveway under chest that was moved back, uh, keeping in mind uh, that, you know, we were uh, going to extend the sidewalk for the town from the bike path so people wouldn't come to the bike path and go out on the road and come into the driveway if they wanted to get a bottle of water or Gatorade or use the restroom or whatever. So uh, all of those uh, design changes were made in, in, in including you know, the flow changes and, and that sort of thing that were you know, more substantive for the DPW. Um, 
And so with this traffic study, you know, because we were told at the round table, I need to see it. Empirical data is what counts. Okay. You know, what the traffic level is, what the impact is on the site, et cetera. And, you know, Steve uh, analysis covered all of that. And, you know, to be quite frank, you know, uh, it, uh, it has a lot of positives to it, the design. And it's, uh, you know, I should say right at the outset, the Davis family, uh, the Huff family, we want the safest possible operation. You know, it's not going to do, it, we need to do it for the citizens of East Long Meadow, we need to do it for customers, we, we need to do it, you know, for the, the employees, we need to be for the people who are going to be delivering goods, the uh, people who are going to be supplying, you know, delivering the oil from delivering the bottles of water. We want this right. to be a very safe site. So we're not, you know, uh, we're very kind. That's the number one priority. For instance, you'll hear tonight that, you know, uh, Ellie Belcher has two employees at all times in their store all the time. They never leave one employee alone for the safety of their employees and for the service to the public. So uh, that's a paramount. And so as we went through and tried to look at essentially, you know, every change that was requested, if it worked for improving safety, we did it. And I, you'll hear tonight that I think every change has been made thoughtfully uh, in terms of, you know, how the flow of traffic will be internally which is important for safety. Many of the accidents occur, you know, in retail establishments, whether it's shopping malls or strip malls, internally, if you don't have proper flow. We made all the changes that the police department requested in terms of having dividing lines in between, you know, coming in and out, um, ballards where they wanted them, uh, things like that. <clears throat> Frankly, what it really, after the second round table, uh, we presented, Steve presented his analysis, and the data supported the flow as this, uh, as, as he will explain to you. And, you know, one issue became, you know, would you restrict traffic onto Chestnut Street turning right? And uh, there seemed to be some support for that by the engineer. Uh, Steve's analysis and the further studies that you heard asked for in the minutes, which he has now done, indicate that that is not the safest way to go. And he will explain that to you as he goes through. So uh, when you get to the actual review of the process, uh, you'll see from Mark how we've laid out the store and the, the one thing was correct they had a transposition of the numbers it is okay. a 4,000 square foot building um, it is just has a storage basement there is no operation going on there uh, it has five fueling stations 10 uh, pumps uh, and we've been through the Conservation Commission we got an order of conditions uh, from the Conservation Commission so uh, we've uh, been through that process and, and received their approval uh, <clears throat> we've done, taking, you know, the best measures we can to give uh, certainly as much barrier and, you know, protection to the neighbor to the north on that side, as you can see from the green space that's going to be there. The, the landscaping around the front is not going to obstruct. In fact, this, you know, the development of this site will actually clear that, the th all the sight lines of that traffic, even though there will be a building there, but the building will be set back. But, you know, the elevation will be brought up, it will be flattened, and it will be lower. That ground cover is decorative landscaping. It's not going to hinder visibility at all. And, uh, and so, you know, we, we feel that uh, we have uh, tried to do the best we can to address all the issues and make this a, uh, a, a very safe uh, and user-friendly operation. Uh, we've gotten great feedback from the community uh, that this is a resource that is welcome in this area of the town. We also get, uh, we believe, and the town gets the the, uh, and Steve will address is the added benefit of, you know, people who are coming through, particularly from the south, through East Long Meadow and going to the Rotary to get gas or going further. This will uh, somewhat dampen or lessen that traffic. I think we call it bypass traffic, Steve. So we get the benefit of, of that as well. <clears throat> and Steve will give you uh, all his analysis as to why the restriction on right turn is not safe or is not as safe as what he has proposed. Um, and uh, I'll let him scientifically describe that, and then if, uh, we can wrap it up in a summary there. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce Mark to give you the general layout, okay. and um, then uh, Steve will present the traffic analysis. Any questions for me before we start? Okay. Uh, my name is Mark Smith with Alfred Benish & Company at 90 National Drive, Glastonbury, Connecticut. And... Uh, yeah, I'll just, it's easier for me, I think, to point to the board, so I think that's okay, Robin, as long as I speak loudly enough. Okay. Um, you're probably familiar uh, with this site, most of you. This is where the bike trail is. Uh, so, um, currently, 
It's just a formally developed but currently undeveloped site. Um, we do have access to all the utilities, gas, water, sanitary sewer. Uh, drainage right now uh, drains to the northwest corner towards that wetlands that was mentioned. Um, the proposed site development is a, it's a 4,500 square foot convenience store. We anticipate half of that being a basement. And as mentioned, the basement is strictly for storage. It's sort of a quality of life thing. If we did not have a basement, it really wouldn't change the convenience store layout on the first floor tremendously. You might be, uh, have to take a little more space up top for, uh, for storage and utilities. But um, in reality, it just it, it makes a much more comfortable situation for the operator. Um, as, uh, as Jim mentioned, we've got five gasoline dispensers. Um, some people get confused. It's, it's five individual pump islands with uh, two fueling positions on each island for a total of 10. Um, so uh, the way we're laying out the site is there's currently four curb cuts, two on Chestnut and two on Shaker Road. Uh, we're taking the Shaker Road curb cut and moving it as far as uh, practical from the intersection, you know, being mindful of, the, of some residential further, further along uh, to the north. Um, we've been trying to optimize the Chestnut curb cut, uh, mindful of the proximity to the intersection with Shaker, but also very mindful of the, the bike trail. So uh, we feel that this, this is at a, you know, an appropriate location for, for that curb cut. Um, it lets us get into the site and you know, access uh, this nice drive aisle we have for both the fueling dispensers and the parking area um, and still get into our, uh, our, uh, our the small parking area we've created right here. Um, there was mention of the uh, this sidewalk connection this walk connection to the bike trail um, and uh, we did, as uh, came from the round table we, we show it connecting all the way to the all the way to the bike trail. Uh, we've been able to maintain a nice perimeter landscaping. We've got a, a great buffer here, um, 70 to 80 feet at the narrowest point on the north side. Um, nice landscape island in front. Um, the site's large enough, 1.8 acres, so we were able to meet all the zoning requirements for setback, lot coverage, um, without any difficulty. Um, so it, it conforms very well with uh, these long metal regulations. Um, so we have the, you know, the planting that will meet uh, you know, all the regulations. We have uh, some trees, um, but in keeping with the idea of not blocking any sight lines, these are mostly lower shrubs and ornamental grasses um, in the islands. Um, nothing at the intersection so, such as a sign is gonna block uh, sight lines. We have to meet the uh, setback for the sign. So the setback is actually in this planting area, or the sign is actually in this planting area here. So that's not in danger of um, obstructing the intersection in, in any way. Uh, we've arranged it so that all deliveries and trash pickup, et cetera, uh, can happen over in this corner of the site, uh, out of the main traffic pattern. Uh, one thing we like about this layout is it lets the tanker come in and tankers, generally speaking, deliver off the right-hand side. And so by doing this, the tanker can come in. Uh, he can, he's not gonna block traffic. Um, and he can deliver off the right-hand side. So the whole delivery operation is gonna happen um, outside the traffic pattern. You'll, you'll have the tanker here, the hoses, uh, the delivery driver, et cetera. Uh, they'll be isolated from you know, from the on-site traffic, which and we think and is that's a good safe thing. for the driver too. And uh, yeah, Belcher uses a, a United here in East Long Meadow, so yep. they're right down the road. So we've consulted them. What is that dimension? Which dimension? From the corner of the building to what is shown as asphalt, where the tanker trucks are going to be parked. From the corner nope. to here, uh, the the forwardmost building, the where canopy. the pump station is. I'm sorry. Oh, here. Yes. To Oops. here. Roughly there to the paved end of the asphalt, going uh, north or northeast, if you will. Okay, this way here. Yes, that dimension. Yeah, it's about uh, 45 feet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the idea would be the tanker can be in there. You can still have a 24 foot. Right. Yeah. Drive line. Be able to get the, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
this is actually a, real, a really nice site. We often have to work with much, much tighter sites. And so um, we've got real, real generous circulation around the islands. Um, you know, people have fills in different sizes of their vehicles, et cetera. Um, the other thing with a site like this, you know, it's kind of long this way, a little narrower this way. So the dispensers are arranged in what's called a dive island situation where you know, you're orientated this way when you're, when you're fueling. But the idea is any driver can access any available fueling position. They don't have to wait for anybody to move out of the way. Um, nobody has to back up to leave if someone is fueling in front of them and they're not done yet. So it's really uh, pretty much an ideal uh, situation. As far as stormwater management goes, um, we've maintained the existing drainage patterns. Um, everything drains to the northwest. Um, so in keeping with the you know, mass DEP stormwater requirements, we've done all our treatment and all our recharge. We take a, a small piece of the, of the parking lot over here, which we couldn't, couldn't work in this direction. We put in a, a stormwater treatment unit just for that, and we took some of the roof run off, and we're going to recharge it over here in underground galleys. The vast majority of the site is going to um, uh, be directed. Uh, anything that's paved is going to be captured in catch basins and run through a treatment unit. Roof runoff, clean runoff, uh, we will uh, pipe directly to the, the detention area. It's really a retention area because the only calculated outflow would be um, for a hundred year storm event. and. Uh, these calculations are generally fairly conservative, so um, we, we expect, uh, based on the soil conditions, um, it was mentioned, uh, given time of year, et cetera, we, we um, didn't go out and do soil testing, uh, but we had spoken with the, the previous town engineer, uh, reviewed the soil mapping, and observed it in uh, major rainfall events, and uh, we're, we're very confident that when we do do the pits, it's just going to confirm we have nice type A soils. Um, but uh, we've done a very conservative design, and uh, after the stormwater uh, travels through the catch basins and the treatment unit, we have an isolated floor bay um, for additional settling before um, it would even go into the main part of the, of the basin. And as I mentioned, we expect it all to recharge, but we do have a 100-year uh, overflow. Um, yeah, I guess at that, I'll just... We do have a concept for the building. Um, I can't say I'm entirely happy with the, the ink, but so it's, I don't. We're not actually probably this yellow is maybe a little little more yellow. Um, at this point, um, the applicant is not certain what uh, fuel brand it would be. Um, Ellie Belcher does brand themselves depending on the location, situation. It's Sitco, Shell, Irving, or Gulf. Um, so. We, we could finalize this image, you know, once, once we know the, the brand name. But the idea is that it'll be, a, you know, a, a pitched roof, clabbered type structure with this, uh, you know, a gable entrance feature. Um, and, uh, you know, I will say from the, from the beginning when, the, when Drew Davis contacted me, the goal was always to make this a very nice neighborhood type station. And so uh, that's what we're trying to, to create here. Um, I guess the only other thing I'll, I'll mention is uh, we have left room for, for some outdoor seating, um, basically a patio, uh, which we think would be a nice feature. Uh, we had plenty of room to do it, and uh, so we proposed some, some seating areas here, and, and I imagine uh, that's something that some of the bike trail folks might take advantage of. Mark, could you comment on the lighting, please? For yeah, it's... it's um, you, know, you have a photometric plan in, in the package. Um, we kept the perimeter lighting to a minimum. It, where we really want the lighting is underneath the canopy. <coughs> but in any event, it's all LED lighting. Uh, that All filming stations are going to LED lighting. Um, the beauty of it is you can direct the light where you want. Um, so we can minimize any spillage off-site. And if you look at the photometric plan we provided, you'll see extremely low uh, lighting levels around the perimeter. Um, and the canopy lights are, are flush mounted to the canopy deck. They're not the old style uh, where the lenses drop down and, uh, and you could basically see the, see the lighting element. Um, so um, it's, it's benefit to everybody. It's an energy savings and it's much more neighborhood friendly than the older style. 
and, and the fire suppression system? <clears throat> yeah, well, as part of this uh, self-serve filling station, um, and this will be actually formally approved for the, through the state fire marshal, um, they will have to have a dry chemical fire suppression system. Um, that will be installed by a licensed installer. Um, it will be you know, reviewed by the local fire marshal. Uh, the ultimate approval comes from the state fire marshal. Um, and as was mentioned, uh, Ellie Belcher operates always with two. Uh, and the idea of that, um, in addition to just general safety, is it lets your attendant attend the fueling operation and not, not, not be distracted by um, things going on in the store. It's, it's the best way to operate one of these facilities. Okay. That it for now? That's it for me, I guess. Um, <laughs> Any questions or Mark before we go to the uh, I've got a few, but I think I'm okay. going to wait till I um, hear this gentleman's <laughs> yeah. before I... Uh, we'll let you give it all. Uh, all yeah, I, I've got a lot of questions, but hopefully you can answer them uh, as, we, as we move forward. Okay. My name is Steve Allman. I'm a licensed traffic engineer in the uh, state of Massachusetts. I work with uh, for Alfred Benish and Company of 90 National Drive, Glastonbury, Connecticut. Um, as Attorney Martin had stated, I was brought on board about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, uh, to update the study that was done by someone else. Um, there were some inconsistencies between the original study done back in September and what actually ended up on, on the table. Um, the number of driveways was reduced from four to two. Um, the number of fueling stage positions was reduced from 12 to 10, uh, so it needed to be redone. Um, in order to calculate the, the impact of the development on the roadway network, uh, we use the ITE trip generation manual for trip generation rates. The rate I picked was land use 945. I'll go into this in more detail when I'm done with this study. Yep. 945 is a gasoline service station. Uh, with convenience market. That land use is for a facility that is predominantly gasoline where the convenience mart is a secondary. I'll, when I get done doing this first report, yep. I'll go into that a little bit further. But that's what I use for this. Uh, based on a f uh, 10 position fueling facility, ADT is 1628. AM peak hour traffic, total traffic is 106 roughly 50% in, 50% out, so it's 53 entering, 53 exiting. Uh, the P and peak hour is 135, 68 entering, 68 exiting. Um, the original study done for, for this facility assumed pass-by trip generation on Shaker, at the intersection of Shaker and Chestnut. Pass-by traffic is that traffic that is already on the roadway, going someplace else, and stops at your facility. Okay. So Pass by traffic is if you take a reduction at those intersections for that phenomenon, but not at your driveways. Uh, the study took a 50% reduction at Shaker or Chestnut. So the driveways had the full uh, trip generation, but what was at Shaker or Chestnut was half that amount. My study, I did not do any pass by trip generation. That was at a request of uh, Mr. Parent, Bob okay. Parent. Uh, he doesn't feel it's, it's uh, should be used here. 50% um, is probably a little bit on the high side, but you are going to have pass by here. People come from Connecticut, go to the Rotary to buy gas and go home. Those people will still come to Massachusetts to buy gas. Hopefully, a number of them will stop here. But they're still going through the same intersection of Shaker and Chestnut. So you will see less traffic than I've generated but I've done a conservative analysis. I did capacity analysis based using the, uh, based on the 2010 Highway Capacity Manual, using the Synchro 8 software package, which analyzes the entire system, not just one intersection at a time. Uh, existing levels of service at Shaker and Chestnut are level of service C, based on the analysis. Uh, with my volumes, uh, it's still level of service C in the PM, both in the AM and the PM peak. The PM is slightly worse. The overall delay in the PM existing is 24.7, almost 25 seconds. Average delay per vehicle. With my original calculations, it bumps to 26.3. Okay. Okay. Uh, the site drives. The Shaker Road at the site drive uh, operates at level service A in the build condition. 
uh, during the PM peak, the <coughs> site drive would be an average delay of 17.6 or a C. Um, the average delay for left turns turning left are 8.7 seconds. It's an A. The Q length is less than a tenth of a vehicle calculated over the hour. By the way, these analyses are based on an hourly volume, an hourly period, the heaviest hour during the peak period. Uh, certain 15-minute intervals will be heavier. Certain 15-minute intervals will be lighter. But the analysis methodology is based on an entire hour for the peak period. Um, this point, I, I want to talk a little bit about the driveway locations. That was mentioned in both the memos. We've moved the Shaker Road driveway about as far north as we can on the site. And it's a good distance away. And I think everyone's agreement that's a good location for the driveway. It's beyond the uh, La Fortuna. I've lost the name of the bakery. La Fortina. La Fortina. Yeah. It's, it's <coughs> north of that. It's away from that as far as we can really go on there. The Chestnut Road, Chestnut Street driveway is problematic. My first look at it as a traffic engineer to help traffic congestion is get it as far away from Shaker as we can get it. The problem is the further away you get from Shaker Road, you have the bike trail. And you have people turning right out of the driveway. From my experience and my education as a traffic engineer, having the driveway closer to Shaker Road is an operational capacity issue. Things break down, don't work as well as if it's further away operationally. In my mind, the closer you get to the pedestrian crossing, that becomes a safety issue. The further away you are allows the driver to pull out of the driveway, get turned, get moving, and become aware of his surroundings. Um, I don't know if you've ever really paid that much attention to it. I pay a lot of attention to where people put speed limit signs. They always put them 100 feet beyond the intersection. And you'll find, if you actually pay attention, as you drive, you make the turn, by the time you're paying attention to the road, that speed limit sign is behind you. So, you, so from a pure pedestrian standpoint, for the, for the pedestrian bikeway, you want that driveway as close to Shake Road as you can get it. So we're juggling a you know, position here. We move the driveway a little bit further towards the bike path uh, about 10, 15 feet. That puts it more than 50 feet now from the stop bar, which allows queuing for two vehicles. The post-development volume analysis shows that I need queuing length of about 35 feet, around two. So left turns on 95% of the time will be shorter than from where the driveway is, so you'll have room at least to get around left turning vehicles during the peak period, during the PM. The next part about the safety of the pedestrian crossing is the signage. Um, one, the signage out there is just one sign. It's a 30 by 30 sign, and it's the old standard, a warning sign yellow out there. From nowadays, we have, the MUTCD allows you to use a bright fluorescent sign. You're most familiar with that at school crossings. However, that, that fluorescent, that bright fluorescent yellow can <coughs> be used and should be used at a place here too. At a, at a crossing and I made a suggestion of basically a three sign panel and it looks like overkill you say why do you need a trail crossing sign why do you need the downward arrow it's again I want to get as much of that fluorescent yellow sign in the driver's eye as they're coming up chestnut towards the, the bike path uh, and I would believe that would be an improvement not to the end all be all but I think it's an improvement to what's out there uh, so based on my original analysis, my study, um, I believe everything would operate safely and efficiently with the way it is currently designed. Based on Monday's meeting, Bob brought up the issue of the trip generation rates that I used. Uh, I used land use 945, which is gasoline service station with convenience market. Bob believes that we should use 853 convenience market with gasoline pumps. Now, I'll read you 850, uh, 853, the first two sentences first, before I go into why I selected 945. The for 853, the convenience market surveyed sell gasoline, convenience foods, newspapers, magazines, often beer and wine. 
This land use includes convenience markets with gasoline pumps where the primary business is selling convenience items, not fueling motor vehicles. Land use 945, gasoline service station with convenience market, is this land use includes gasoline service stations with convenient markets where the primary business is the fueling of motor vehicles. Okay. That's what I have to go on when I select okay. land use for uh, facilities. Typically when I'm looking at these kind of things, I've done half dozen or dozen. If I'm at a point where there's a convenience market with six or less fueling positions, to me, that's more of a market than it is a gas station. This has 10 fueling positions. So I picked 945 for use. However, based on Bob's comments, I decided to go out and see what would happen if I did the trip generation and the analysis based on 853, land use 853, convenience market with gasoline pumps. Now, this is where the square footage comes into play. Gasoline, 945 gasoline service station with a, this, we do the trip generation based on fueling positions. There are 10, because that's the primary business. 853 is a convenience mark with gasoline pumps. The primary business being assumed to be the uh, market. And that means you need to use the square footage of the market for the trip generation rate. I assumed a 4,500 square foot facility okay. to do trip generation. That says the ADT is 3,803 as opposed to 1628. The A and peak hour generation would be 184 as opposed to 106, which is 92 entering and exiting. And the P and peak hour would be 229 as opposed to 135. Just so you know that convenience 853 does allow you to do the generation based on the number of pumps. That's in the middle. So I'm using square footage for this analysis. When I did the analysis, I found that the overall level of service at Shaker Road at Chestnut is still level service C during the morning and afternoon peak period. All right, if I may, could you read the definition of level C and level D so that sure. way everybody's okay. got a uh, better understanding of what's... The classic definition is more of a... Not the feeling in her A, B, C, D. Yeah, there's A, B, C, D. Okay. It's just like grading in, in right. paper. A is great, F is failure. Yep. Um, a is basically you can drive through an intersection, drive down the road, and you really don't feel any, inter any, any interference from other vehicles. B, you're starting to feel a little bit of interference from other vehicles, but you really don't care. C is you're starting to notice people and you're starting to have to adjust your movements accordingly. D is now things are getting a little bit worse. You're having to stop more often. You're having to really pay more attention. E is you're starting to get to capacity. F is failure. In terms of numbers, in a signalized intersection, level of service A is an average delay of less than 10 seconds. <clears throat> average delay B is an average delay of 10 to 20 seconds. Level of service C is an average delay of 20 to 35 seconds. And that's, you're sitting there and that's how long the average person has to wait to go. D, as I said, is, as you start to approach capacity is 35 to 55 seconds. E is 55 to 80 seconds delay. F is anything over 80. Okay. More importantly, F is more associated as signal of failed cycles. If you always approach an intersection, throughout the hour, and you stop in the queue, you see a red light, light turns green, you don't get through on that green light. Most cycles during the hour that happens, that's an F, okay? If you approach the end of the queue and 95% of the cycles get through that signal, that's really considered capacity, which would be an E right there. So those are the, that's where you are. Uh, I could go into unsignalized intersections, still based on delay, a little bit less for each, each level. But that's how it's done for a signal. Okay. Um, as I stated earlier, um, with my original analysis during the PMP, peak, the was going to be a level service C with an average delay of 26.3 seconds. With the higher numbers, 
again, no pass by, putting all the traffic on the intersection. The average delay is now 28.5 seconds. An increase from my original analysis of 2.2 seconds, average delay, and from existing PMP calculated, 3.8 seconds per vehicle, per delay. Um, all approaches operated D or better uh, during all periods. Um, and I would address the issue based on anecdotal evidence on what is seen when Linux lets out a chestnut. That's more of a 15 minute thing. Factory lets out, a shift lets out, you get three, four, five cycles that are a problem, a chestnut, and the rest of the time there's no real issue. I was out there for 45 minutes between 4 and 4.45 today. I'll be honest, and that's part of the peak period that's analyzed in the counts. I saw no queues backing up really beyond uh, our second driveway on our site. And they always cleared, so there's always a way to get out. Um, and I can answer any questions you have at this point. I don't know how far else you want to go. Uh, oh, in terms of the, the adding of prohibiting of right turns on left chestnut. Turn. Left turn, sorry, left turns on chestnut. The only real way to do that is to put a race island in. And you run into some real problems creating a raised island that's going to effectively block people from making a left turn. And what's going to happen is, and I've seen it in a lot of places, and a lot of jurisdictions don't even let you do it, is because what happens is if you put the island there, 20, 23 hours, 22 hours during the day, there's not going to be a whole lot of traffic. The driver's going to come up to the thing and say, gee, I can make a left turn, no problem. But instead of just coming straight, looking to the left, looking to the right, and turning left, you now have got them angled, headed towards the bike path, looking hard over the left shoulder, and almost doing a U-turn to make the left turn. Right. And they are going to do it. Um, Question. You know, and, that, and that's a problem that we have with prohibiting right turns is actually building that. This is even worse on a gas station. You're trying to get tankers in and out of the station. The second you make that right turn wide enough for a tanker to maneuver, to allow them to use it, you've totally eliminated any prohibition for the cars to turn left because it's going to be 22 feet wide. They can pull up, they can do, and they do the turn. We see it all the time. Um, so, and my analysis does show that cars can safely and effectively navigate the, the site as it is designed. Okay. The only things I'd supplement is that after Monday's meeting, <coughs> the additional analysis was done and, and the engineer did go out and visit the site. So those are the two things. We looked hard at this option of this pork chop for funneling people right, which would be West on Chestnut. <coughs> based on his conclusions, don't think it's the safest way to, to go. Okay. All right, you guys have anything else you'd like to add before I turn it over to you? Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, it's just, Market. yeah, I just mentioned one. Uh, Another safety issue. Well, I say we, we like the tanks where they are. Uh, it's really the best place for them. Gets them out of the traffic pattern, and that's going to be a regular thing, tanker deliveries, of course. And ideally, that tanker would be able to come here and, and make a left and uh, go where he, go back to uh, wherever he needs to go. Um, the site, as I mentioned before, it's kind of long this way, skinny this way. Well, well skinny this way well, with the setbacks, etc. cetera, um, it doesn't allow us to create a situation where the tanker can, can do a, a, you know, a, a U-turn on site. We really want them to be able to come in one curb cut and, and go out the other. All right, and we certainly don't want them backing up. Anything else from Jim? All right, okay. I'll, George, I'll start with you. Uh, what are the hours of operation? 20, 24 hours a day. 24, okay. Um, and as you have outdoor seating, is there going to be any seating inside the building? I don't believe so. No. No, okay, so we don't have a restaurant. Correct. Um, just clarifying that if, if there's in, indoor seating inside the building uh, for food that's, that's purchased there, that yeah. turns it into a restaurant. We, been through this with other convenience stores in town. I want to make that point that that would be a, a different uh, or a, a separate special permit that would be needed if that was ever to be to happen. 
Okay. Thank you for reminding us. Yeah. Well, we, we just went through that with another convenience store in town and just trying to be consistent. Um, being at you 24-7, um, we have had some concerns about noise late at night, particularly dumpsters being emptied or replaced in the middle of the night. Uh, typically, um, dumpster companies like to come at early in the morning when there isn't much traffic. Uh, is there some way to get a restriction on that so that the neighbors right across the street are not here in dumpsters at 4 a.m.? I'm sure we can work on that, right? Yeah, we can, we can definitely do that. We've actually, uh, to accommodate other residential areas where we have developments, we've uh, restricted the times where our trash haul vendors can and cannot come on property. And we, we, we should be forced to Okay. Because I, I, we have heard that concern already, obviously, and mm -hmm. um, it's it's something that is important. Um, you try, you try, you have a basement here. What's the elevation of the basement floor versus the water table? Because I know you've got a wetland right behind you there. Uh, water table is high in this area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've got the basement finished floor is at 217.76. And the, so that's the basement finished floor. And the, uh, where the wet the wetlands are, um, it's 215. Okay. So we, we actually wanted to make sure we could get our, put a footing drain in there and get it out by gravity, yeah. daylight it. Right. So yeah, so we, did, we intended to uh, get up above okay. the water table. It's East Long Meadow. It's an issue we have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But la last question I have, and I'm sure other members have the same issue. Um, at certain times of year, uh, particularly around the holidays and certain Sundays, uh, La Fiorentina actually hires a police officer to direct traffic um, because of the problem they have right now with people trying to make a left turn from Shaker Road into their driveway or from um, their driveway onto Shaker Road. And uh, I, I've seen it where, unfortunately, there, there's three lanes on Shaker <coughs> Road all the way up to just before your parcel starts. At that point, it goes to two lanes. You lose the turning lane, the, the, the middle turning lane. And you know, it, it appears would appear to me that if someone were trying to make a left turn from Shaker Road, which we see all the time into La Fiorentina, and it backs up traffic, and then somebody's trying to make a left turn from Shaker Road into your place, you've got two conflicting left turns, and nobody's going to go anywhere. H how do you see that? being working out in, in real time. You're the traffic guy. Take <laughs> <laughs> a left at the light on Shaker and then a right at the front at Chestnut. Well, that would be what, what a smart person would do. <laughs> <laughs> the other mm -hmm. issue, I, I know I was actually sitting in the La 14 yeah. Plaza. Mm -hmm. One of the issues there is the grade difference mm -hmm. of the parking lot. Uh, I actually saw two vehicles bottom out terribly pulling into the, yeah. the facility. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's part of the problem mm -hmm. that people, at least turning into there, yeah. that's part of the problem. It's probably a problem coming out as well. People are afraid, so they're, they're moving more slowly. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the gridlock, you, you hope it doesn't happen. There's nothing, you know, there's no real way to do it unless, you know, even if there's left turn lane there, you may still have that problem. Uh, as, you know, as, as was brought up, <coughs> would hope people would, you know, if there's a lot of traffic at La Fortina, that they would then use the Chestnut Street Drive. Which has a left turn arrow, yeah. Right. Which, which would Absolutely. make much more sense. Um, I just needed to raise the issue because it is, it is an issue right now, particularly at Christmas and Easter and certain Sundays when they do a, a tremendous, actually the day before those holidays, when they do a tremendous load of business. I mean, they, they actually hire, on their own volition, they hire a policeman to uh, to direct traffic at those times. So I just want to raise that, that issue. And that's all I had to And I would, I would also hope that during those times when the officer's there, that he would be cognizant of our driveway as well to make sure that gridlock, not that he'd help our driveway per se, <laughs> per se but he would help eliminate the, the gridlock. Yeah, okay. Mr. Page? Uh, okay. I just wanted to point out that there, you know, 
if they that experience happens that be signs like do not block the driveway do not block the entrance that they would uh, have experience with okay yeah I, I mean I see I've seen those signs at the FL Roberts at Westwood and North Main which is also a very high volume station which somehow manages to function <laughs> well and and they get they've got a you know a, a, a a car wash there as well. They do a huge volume of business, and uh, somehow or other, the traffic seems to work there. So I'm, I'm not being negative here. I'm just mm -hmm. raising some issues that have been pointed out to me and that that I haven't be aware of. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Okay. Um, first question is on the basement. Um, basement. Basement of the building. Um, it sounds like you're really not sure how many square feet it's going to be. Well, I, I mean, is it uh, definitely going to be half the building, full building? Because I think the, the storage building. area. Not the full building, it'll be half or less. It's utilities down there. Um, we use it for storage. I mean, paper goods. Uh, we generate a lot of paper you know, from the registers. I guess my question is, is the entire building going to have a full basement no, under no. it and then only half no. used? No. 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 Oh, okay. No, no. And the square footage, I believe it makes a difference as far as even for storage, as far as the amount of parking um, that's needed. Is it 3,000? <coughs> One per 3,000. One per 3,000. So, so if it ends up being 3,400 square feet. It won't feet, be. It'll be less than two. Okay. Or and Robin pointed that out at one of the roundtable meetings, yep. and we added a parking space just to be sure. But mm -hmm. it's going to be about half. Okay. Well, the other thing to note is with the additional storage space, it cuts down on the delivery truck traffic because we can take in a larger paper good delivery and so it's less deliveries because of the storage. Okay. Um, I noticed uh, in the front corner you were talking about signage, uh, a ground sign. Mm -hmm. um, it, do we have any idea exactly what type of ground sign are we looking at? The sound in the front corner, correct me if I'm wrong, is a, a flag which is required by law. You have to have a flag bull sign showing your prices. Okay. That And whatever brand goes with it, am I describing it correctly? So if it's Shell, it has the, the Shell and the yellow colors, and it has the, you know, three grades of gasoline, and you're, and you're required by law to have that. Okay. Um, in the that's what's allowed, that's what will be yep. allowed on that corner. I, I just, like I said, just trying to get a visual of it. Um, in the canopy, um, typically they'll do Sunoco, Irving, or whatever, is that all? The brand backwards? colors. The brand colors and yeah. all on it. Right, uh, correct. Obviously, depending on which brand is right. chosen, right. Um, and at this time, we still don't need know what type of co-branding is going into the building. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, part of these is um, there's a lot more traffic typically, at least from what I've seen with, let's say, a Dunkin' Donuts. People running in and out on their way to work to grab a coffee, as compared to I don't know, maybe a Subway, but that's at lunchtime. Um, mm -hmm. Like yeah, I said, yeah. it's just, and that goes to the traffic study as to, I mean, a 4,500 square foot building, to me, is a convenience store to where a lot of people will be using it as a convenience store. Um, I, I don't think, I think this probably falls somewhere in between those two reports. Which is why we did both studies. So <laughs> we, we wanted to yeah. answer the question yeah. of the superintendent. All right, I'm going to just, not to interrupt, I'd like to follow through that. Right now you're showing a convenience store, but you're also showing space for a future entity, such as a Dunkin' Donuts or a Subway. Did you factor that into your equation? No, there is no way to factor that in. This is, when you're using these, these generation rates, they're based on studies at real places. Okay. So within there, while I haven't gone into it, within there, there I'm sure there were stores with Dunkin' Donuts, with Subways, with Hardee's, with... Um, I, I actually know one by my, my daughter's house that has a Burger King okay. with it. Uh, Sphinx down in South Carolina. They do a lot of Burger King and Hardee's with theirs. And these studies are done at real places. They're not just theoretical numbers. The actual the generation rates are based on uh, studies of actual facilities around the country for the past 20, 30 years. Okay. And, and that's the database that the superintendent asked us to use because it does incorporate those potential right, that's, options. I want to clarify yeah. that because no, I, that's, that's definitely that, would change. That's in there yes. now whether, it, you know, now I would also state that, and I've stated, stated at the meeting, these numbers would be low if there was a drive-thru. 
but there is no a drive through. Right. A drive through is a different animal. Well, which creates yeah. more problems. But uh, and but that's and that is something that is not included in these numbers. Okay. Okay. But I, you know, when you have some of these facilities are up to ten thousand square feet in this land use, and I gotta believe those have, you know, those are the Burger King ones. You know, like I've seen. Okay. Ralph, I'll let you finish, uh, Corey. No, for now, I, I think I've touched on the, Ralph, the basics. We've seen Ralph five times. <laughs> <laughs> he knows the project as well as we do. He's been every round right table. Now, <laughs> for right now, for right now. thank you. Uh, I had a couple of couple of concerns um, for delivery wise. Um, where is everything going to get delivered? Is it going to get delivered in the front of the building or in the back? Yeah, um, we've got some tables and chairs there. You know. No, we set this up so that your parking space is across the front. Yep. They end right here. Okay. This is our our dumpster, which is fully screened. Yep. Uh, we, we did put a tree there, but also it's uh, we got a, a cedar, you know, fence type enclosure mm -hmm. right. uh, with a metal frame, and we've left uh, about 20 feet in front of it. So, so that delivery front. vehicle can fit in here okay. entirely without um, even getting past the parking spaces. And then we have a ramp right here. Okay. So, um, it, we, yeah, we, we wanted it set up that way. Okay. Um, dumpster dumping is going to be kind of difficult there. I know in the mornings you guys and some of the neighbors are going to be complaining about in the mornings. Afternoons I think are going to be rough if you're going to get that much traffic in there for fuel. Um, I think that's well, one area. Well, I think he said he's willing to restrict it in a, you know, right. we can, yeah. you know the timing is 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock. crucial. We can certainly pigeonhole our whole our group for a specific yeah. time frame. Uh, it, dumpster dumping is, is a very quick process. Right. Yeah. You can be on and off the property in a minute, really. Just uh, on, a, on a windy day, I've seen some stuff flying around and um, just in that one, you know, if, if it's in that one spot, I mean, I, I think that would be one of your maybe one of your goals just to just to nail down a, a, a some sort of time frame where they can be in um, to make everybody happy um, the other thing that was that was a concern was the runoff um, how, how deep is that basin going to be in that corner there um, I, I only my, my concern is there's a bike path behind there mm -hmm. a lot of children a lot of dogs um, um, how, how is that going to dissipate I guess well you should never <coughs> overflow the spillway except in a hundred year storm because typically in July right around um, carnival time we usually get a good good soaking <laughs> <laughs> yeah I got a feeling this guy predicts the weather <laughs> but, no, like said, the, the runoff from this whole parking area here currently the whole site just direct flows directly down into here yep we're obligated to have no increase in, in runoff. Correct. So we've put in this significant retention basin so that even though the calculations with these type of soils show, you're talking about fractions of a cubic feet per second, I think it was like point, point 0.39 cubic feet per second, and we went out there in, it's in our drainage report, mm -hmm. um, in a, you know, a, a multi-inch rainstorm, and there was not a lot running off the site because it's a good site, it has good soils. So we had to recreate that. So we created this basin so that virtually all the runoff gets recharged here without passing over the property line. Okay. You know, it's a really aggressive uh, sort of drainage design. Is it very steep? Uh, three to one. Okay. Gravel bottom or grass bottom? No, grass. As a matter of fact, um, we originally had a riprap outlet, yep. but because we expect essentially no flow out of this spillway um, and the fact that we have to give some width to the spillway, we, we're going to just bury a permanent erosion mat okay. so that this is just going to be grass. You aren't going to see any, any riprap. It's not going to look like a DOT just outlet Just a lot easier all. to maintain. You know? Yeah, you can mow it and um, it's going to look a lot better. And you've created a path, right, to go down? <coughs> Where's that? Well, yeah, for maintenance, but that's right. another problem with basins is um, sometimes they're hard to maintain, so they grow up with right. you know, grass with and, and stuff. It's saplings and all that. But uh, we've graded a drivable, you know, for, for maintenance equipment, a drivable access down into the basin so they can maintain it. Sounds good. 
deliveries, these guys touch, touch base and everything else. I think I'm pretty good. Ty? Um, my biggest issue is the um, curb cut on Chestnut. Um, I understand you moved to 15 feet. Uh, I'm not a traffic engineer, so I'm handicapped a little bit here. But um, I know the property very well. I used to own the property across the street where KFC uh, used to be, and I sold it to a little Florentino. So I know the, the area very, very well. I've seen a lot of back up there, and um, I'd rather see some type of safety improvement, and I don't know what the answer is, for the bike path and move that entrance further west um, because I just feel that so close to the intersection with two cars stacking, anyone coming out of there trying to make a left-hand turn, um, most times, uh, certainly not at 2 o'clock in the morning, but most times when there's traffic going to the intersection, it's going to be almost an impossible feat, particularly if cars are, are stopping uh, at the red light on Shaker going south and making a right-hand turn. As soon as they make that right-hand turn, you got a guy coming out of the gas station trying to make a left on Chestnut, and, and you start creating a bottleneck. bottleneck. Um, those are the things that are on my mind regarding this project. I think it's going to look beautiful. I think the rest of the project looks, you know, looks professionally done, of course. Um, I feel the operator is probably right on, uh, on target with uh, being able to you know, conduct a business like this in East Long Meadow. But I, I just am having a very difficult time with the curb cut at Chestnut Street. Well, I'm not an engineer either, so we're both handicapped equally. But the engineers, including your superintendent, after going back and forth, agreed on that location, you know, as a better, the best optimal location for, as he said, a problematic, you know, length of road. And that's for full service, right in, right out, right, in, right, uh, in. At, right <laughs> left, everything. See, the, the, issue, the issues you're raising with Shaker are operational. Um, you hope that drivers... If they can't get in the left turn lane this cycle, when it when it clears, they will make their left into the left turn lane. The key word of that sentence is hope. <laughs> well, they're drivers and they're human. However, my uh, my bigger problem. concern is someone turning right out of the driveway and not getting focused in time for the person with the carriage walking across. No, the I bike understand path. that, and, and, I, and, and I, there's I, no real way. And the issue is that. All of the tools in our toolbox for crosswalks, whether it be signage, whether it be rapid flash beacons, whatever, if the driver is making a move and doesn't and can't get, isn't cognizant of the, of the bike path in time, all those mechanisms won't help. So, I mean, and there's not a whole lot of things we can do for bike paths. It, you can put signage up. You can put in uh, rapid flash beacons. But again, those are more, you know, especially the rapid flash beacons, are more used in places where you have a long straightaway, where people can see them for a long period of time to react. That's my, my bigger concern is really the reaction time. Person turning right out of the site, not paying attention, you know, he's looking over his shoulder, he turns right, he accelerates, and I said, Oh my god, I'm at the I'm at the I'm at the trail. So the the issue is that to the west is a safety issue in my mind, to the east is an operational issue. And since the real problems are going to occur maybe during the peak peak hours, two to three hours during the day, that I think it's a better option to have the operational issues a little bit on the downside, but improve the safety of the, and I don't know what, how else to do it. I, I, I understand the problem, and I'm not saying I have the solution, but I just don't like a curb, that curb cut at that intersection so close to the intersection. Which is, what, but that is also the location of the curb cut that was there originally. It's yeah, I understand, really, yeah, but yeah, um, yeah, you know, originally it was 30 years ago when there's a bar there. The use was different. The whole intersection was different. I understand it's grandfathered in, right. I, uh, you and know, so I'd forth. But we have tried to work with. It. I just, you know, I'm I'm trying to balance the worst of two worlds. No, I understand. I I, I understand you're trying very you hard know. to make it work. Um, I'm not implying that you're not, but I just we I'm shared having, your concerns, which is why we. Moved it back, moved it forward, moved it in the middle. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, uh, ideally, it's ne nothing's going to be ideal on 
chestnut because you get a, a small, a, a narrow lot anyways to deal with. But a better solution is probably uh, um, a write out only. But, you know, it still doesn't, that doesn't do anything for the argument you're making regarding the uh, bike the path. Safety, the bike path, right. And that's the, and I, I, I you know, as a professional engineer, I'm going to I'm going to err on the side of safety. Yeah, I'm just telling you that. Yeah, well, I understand. Oh, that's I, what I'm I had struggling with. When, I, when Mark first showed me the plan, I said, "Can't you move that further away?" And then, then as he started looking at it, I saw the bike path, and you know, started looking at pictures of it where the bike path is. It's. I get nervous. I really do about people turning right and not paying attention. It's like I, I brought the stop sign up. It's my pet peeve in my hometown. That's why I brought it up. They put the stop sign 75 feet beyond the intersection at every intersection. And by the time you turn right, you make a move, turn left, you have no clue what speed you're going, supposed to go. All right. That's my pet peeves, and, and, I, and, that, okay. and that, that's in my mind in terms of, that's because the driver, as the driver makes a turn, they're not looking down the road. Their eyes are shifting from looking to their left. They're shifting, they're going to, they have to move back to the center, they have to center the car in the road. They're probably going to, at that point, check their speedometer or not, or look someplace else. And there is a 50, 100 feet, what, there's a period of time where they're not really paying attention to what's far down the road. Now, the other thing is that when you are turning right, you're, the way you look is you look right, you look left, then you make your move. Well, when you looked right, there may not have been anyone in the crosswalk. You look left, someone walks in the crosswalk, you, you turn out, and then all of a sudden they're there. That makes that kind of makes me nervous. You know, I, that's why I'm saying I I, I understand I know they I know exactly where you're coming from. Yeah. I understand where you're coming <laughs> from, but if once, I may, sure. Um, yeah. I had a meeting with the superintendent of the uh, public works today, and one of the suggestions he made was right now there's a raised curb that lets pedestrian track flow both ways effortlessly. One right. of the suggestions he made was to put something there that would stop that, so at the very least pedestrians have to turn their body to at least see what's coming. And the argument he made was um, somebody jogging with a baby carriage, got the earplugs in, we're not paying attention. They basically have a straight path. They may look, they may quick, uh, look quick. Right. As to your argument, somebody pulls out, you know, there's a recipe for disaster. If um, we can slow down the pedestrian traffic, I think that would help whether we do it or whether you do it. The um, issue is how you do that. Um, I do a, our, my town doesn't put anything across the paths. Right, that's where they, we are now. <laughs> but I think in the You do more than my town. To you actually put signs and stop signs at the path. There's another town, next town over from me, that has a paved path that's wide enough for a um, golf cart, 4x4 four four type of thing. And they are now on their third version of blocking that. The first version was... Uh, bollards set in the pavement, round bollards that you could lift out. That lasted a year. The next one was T-bars that you could lay down. That lasted two or three years. And when I went walking there last fall, they pulled all that out and have gates with locks on. And the gate is about two and a half feet. So I don't know, you know, that's really, I agree with you 100%, yeah, no, we just get the but that's the really yeah, what your maintenance people can live with. We have, we have no objection to that. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, the police department at one of the round tables said they originally went with nothing so that they could zoom down there in time right. of emergency if someone was on the bike path and there was an accident. <clears throat> I think they said it to one of the round tables. Thus far, there have been none. You know, that, that need has thankfully not arise, arose, arisen. So, uh, <clears throat> but we have no objection, you know, in terms of the overall design to incorporate something that would uh, slow down the errant biker, runner, okay. jogger, you know, carriage pusher. That <clears throat> to be honest. From and been doing this for years on site plans with uh, emergency vehicle access and things. Probably the gates are probably the best bet. I don't know, but yeah, you're going to you're going to have I lots. I think that's going to fly. I don't think that's going to work. We, we, but, but the point is, we're willing to work. Okay. With the yeah, I think there's a, a, an, a, an agreeable you know solution I that I, I think with a little bit of effort on everybody's actually part. Actually, something really just popped in my head. Do you put in? A speed bump for pedestrians. And that's you, certainly an option? You raise it, and on the top you put the tactile strip 
you know, in the middle of the problem. Right. I'm, I'm just thinking yep. off no, top of my head. This is um, an idea by the town engineer I thought was a great uh, idea. We can work, we can work yeah. into it. Yeah, okay. we'll move the way out. Yeah. yeah. Some, some way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I did not interrupt, but I'll let you finish. Yeah, and on. my uh, my last, so that's my concern, one of my concerns. The other one is, once again, we've had this conversation a few times here tonight. What is the footprint of the main level, not counting the basement? Just, just 4,500 square feet. Okay, so um, because I was a little confused when it sounded like it was 4,500 for the total building split in half, so half of it was basement. No, 4,500 is the first. So it's 4,500, and then there's an additional, whatever the additional two thousand, basement two thousand is. 2,000 square feet. Okay, so we're talking 6,000 6, square feet total, two floors. Right. Okay, basement gotcha. Basement and one floor. So the basement floor. is strictly for storage. No, own, no, I understand yeah, that. Yeah, their own quality of life. I understand customers are not going in the basement. Right, right. Mm -hmm. but chances are a customer will go in there wouldn't know that store from one that has a, you know, doesn't have a basement. Yeah, they don't, that, the customer doesn't care if you have a basement gonna, or not. And yeah, the, yeah, the square footage of, you know, the usable square footage on the first floor is going to be very, very similar. So the 4,000 square foot convenience store seems pretty substantial. It's... Well, substantial, yes, but it's it's typical these days. I think you've probably seen a lot of construction in the industry. It's it's the the business model. Um, it's what um, you, know, you see. Cumberland Farms is doing a lot of construction, and they're doing a lot of stores this size. Um, it's it, it's fairly standard. Um, no, I, I I agree. It's standard, and I'm very familiar with yeah. with the process in the industry. But um, it sounds pretty substantial as compared to gas sales. In other words, um, it, it sounded like we were t starting out the conversation saying, well, the heavy emphasis is on gas and it's kind of a incendiary uh, or a secondary use as convenience store, whereas it really sounded like convenience store really is a pretty, obviously it's important to the business, but I mean, it really sounds like it's pretty primary. I'm sure gas is too when you got Connecticut people coming up to Massachusetts to buy gas because of prices and so forth. but. Uh, 4,000 square foot uh, convenience store with a you know a, a leased area for either Subway or Dunkin Donut or someone like that sounds like the convenience store is more than just incidental. Uh, I'll, I'll let the Belcher people speak to that if you want some more dialogue. One, they're in the oil business, so yeah, well, of and, course they are. And secondly, uh, you know, if you look at a lot of those 4,000 square foot stores that are around, not many have 10 fueling stations. So I mean, this is a, a large so the, and. Finally, Steve's numbers show it doesn't make a difference really whether you treat it under the standard that the superintendent asked for as a convenience store and a gas station or a gas station and a convenience store. Okay, I, I'm, I'm just voicing the two things Appreciate that were on my mind. Thanks, James. Anything else? That's good. No, All right, I'm, I'm going to actually pick up where he left off just for some clarification points. I know we talked about the 4,500 for one level. In the rendering, he showed two dormers up above. The building could, in fact, be big enough to put square footage on the second floor. Is there any intent no. to do that? No. Okay. That's for light. Okay, I just case that was a clarification point. My second point is you showed the entrance being projected out past the building. Mm -hmm. The drawing I'm seeing now really doesn't show that projection. Can you give us an idea of where that projection is going to end up in yeah, relationship to the you parking? See, you see the columns, uh, the little, well, put it, uh, yeah. So you see these columns here? Yes. So those are right, you know, they're far enough in from the edge of the sidewalk. So this is the... That's okay. that projection. So in right? essence, right up to the parking lot. Yeah. Okay. The sidewalk. Yep. Or sidewalk. Yep. So it's covered going in. Okay. My next question is: You talked about a canopy over the gas pumps. I know mm -hmm. there's topography-wise, it drops off very quickly. And you talked about the bushes and the landscaping not being in the line of sight of the traffic. Will a canopy at its height conflict with any of the eyesight and/or traffic sight lines? No. It, well, one, it's set back. Okay. You know, generously, but um, in you know, I'm, I guess that's about 70 feet. What are the uh, the, the two elevations from the road to the top of the canopy, if you can? Yeah. And or to the bottom. Of on the, the the grade at the canopy is average about 228. Top or, or to the to the grade. Okay. The ground, yeah, and uh, the clearance. Uh, we I just want to check what we use. We would probably use 15 foot clearance or uh, 14.6 uh, uh, okay I'm getting there <laughs> it's uh, 14 foot six clear okay from the highest what's the highest elevation of the road from the 228 bottom elevation from the well so if you went straight across the road is 
about looks like it's going to be about two two twenty nine and a half or so. Right? If you want, what I'm saying is, um, this was. Uh, I think the point is we're raising. Yes. Yeah, just, just, yeah. For clarification purposes, I want to make sure we get. That's a 228. Okay. And you're at, uh, say, 229 and a half right okay. here. So it's a, about a foot, foot and a half below the road. Okay. I mean, it may be and obvious right. to some people. I just, I just want to get some no, clarification. That's a good point. We are gonna, it's going to be filled. Okay. The parking lot on the left, too, I know I was told today that was employee parking and slash vacuum cleaners for what have you. Mm -hmm. Is that an accurate statement? Yep. All right. And the other concern I have, it's not really for you, but it's for this board. Um, the opposite two corners are also zoned for the same thing, so potentially we could have this in the future. Packaged machinery is empty. Um, I'm hoping someday that will be filled with a tenant and that more, um, that many more tax dollars to the town. Going back to what you said, you're considering it's a level C. Our town engineer thinks it's a level D, um, you know, and that's open to interpretation. Right. Um, I understand that. My concern is, this is going to impact the intersection as well. The future impact would be much more severe. So I think we need to at least think of the future. Again, I know that's not your... your it's hard for us to plan for It's that. not for your burden to bear. Right. It's our burden mm -hmm. to bear. That being said, I like the idea of the traffic turning right. At the very least, it takes the tractor, tractor trailer trucks out of the intersection equation. So at peak hours, if the tractor trailers are trying to get through there with the traffic, I think that's going to be one less thing if we could get them to turn right. I do realize the cars are probably have a tendency to turn left if and when they feel like it, but I do like the idea of them turning right. So, that's just good. So you think you're talking about tractor trailers using this facility? Tractor trailer trucks when they bring the deliveries for the fuel. Okay. So, but, so far, I can say if they were going out, rather than give them the option to go left or right, I would rather see them go right because if they go left, obviously they're going to conflict with the traffic and or the intersection. Again, I'm not a uh, traffic engineer. I'm just giving you my two cents oh, worth yeah. of my common sense. That is correct. Okay. Yeah, because if they turn left, they have no place to go but through the intersection. Correct. Right. But, Which, but, I was but if they turn right, they're now going over the, the crossing. I, I agree. I'm, I'm, there's no. Unfortunately, <laughs> and, I don't think there's any perfect solution here. But I think the, we have the, to find a half well, compromise. The and the and the thing is, if we if you restrict it to rights out only with the, the tractor trailer, you know, there's no way the cars are going to observe it. I'm not disagreeing with you. You know, and that's just. Right. It's just, right. that's just, you know, that's just the fact of life. Yeah, and all your, your great comments, with, but I think you can see we've found some well, of these permutations. Yeah. <laughs> you know, forgive me for asking some of the obvious questions. No, that's um, fine. These are questions that people have asked us. Perfect. I want to make sure we try to clarify the points yeah. as many as we can. Well done. We, we, um, yeah. Does anybody want to say anything for open to the board? Can I make a point to address the, the, the trailer leading into the right? Certainly. Belcher's principal supplier is United. United is, is the role of uh, all of us, United. The right of, uh, on Shaker. Yeah. So you're going to be directing their principal caller away from right. that place of business. Well, I'll, I take that one step further. You're going to direct them away and down across the bike path to do a U-turn, come back across the bike path to the right. intersection. That's a valid point. <laughs> Certainly valid point. go to the next yeah. intersection, yeah. take yeah. a left, and right. come around the block. As well as every other well, car who the gets to the, the, the next yeah. intersection down is way down and so you're exactly. sending them down the bend and then you're sending them through industrial and drive and so you know you're creating a lot more traffic yeah, technically as well as any other car that may take come to that uh, that exit and say oh i can't take a left here i'm going to have to go down the road across the bike path do a u-turn come back across the bike path in the first section all right everybody anything else for open mr chairman public? May I? certainly um i did want to note that from your plan um all the brush that's existing now along the rail trail um, at least where your building is going to be, is going to be cleared out. So it looks like, at least from this, that the sight line to the bike path should be better. Um, I know that's been some concern in the past. Uh, the DPW has actually gone in and moved some of uh, the brush and all back. Um, that's a good thing. Thank you. <laughs> um, as is the brush already been cleared? I did corner. notice that today. <laughs> I, I was well aware that uh, across the street, when you come down Chestnut, to make a left, they've cleared out all the brush on that side. Um, question for the traffic engineer. Um, if you take a right out of the parking lot, what's going to catch your attention first? A yellow beacon or a sign on the side of the road? The yellow beacon is going to be above the sign. Mm. 
Nah, that wasn't the question. <laughs> the question uh, was, what's going to draw are your attention? The, the beacon will attract your attention mm. more rapidly. Okay. But mm. doesn't the beacon require pedestrian? Well, then that's also a pedestrian activity. Active. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Correct. Correct. <laughs> and and so, it, it is being used on, on Maple Street right now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it's, eff point. it's effective. Pedestrians do use it. Yep. Do they press? Yes. Oh, yes. Wasn't wasn't that brought up to uh, every section supposed to be done eventually down the road? I have no idea. I haven't heard that. Yeah, no idea. Of course, to your point, we looked at that too, and of course, <coughs> people are not don't tend to get off their bike and press it. You know, right. they just that's, that's why runners I, don't yeah, stop and press yeah. it. You know, I, I think that's a concern of ours more than you. Will do it, but the, yeah. the other yeah. categories of users generally don't. Okay. Yeah. I have one more Certainly. question. Um, is it the intent to uh, get a beer and wine license for this place or, or not? At this point, I refer to these folks. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Just so we understand. Okay. Yep. Anybody? I got one more. Certainly. Um, is that primarily gas, or is there going to be diesel there also? There will be diesel. Um, I guess these guys will tell me if I'm wrong, but the idea. And which pumps would be? Right. The the outside lanes. Uh, they, these would be gasoline, and this would be a gasoline and diesel, and gasoline and diesel. Yeah. And that's two pumps per set per section, right? Yeah, five one pump on the island where you can fuel on either side. And that'd be two pumps on each side. Um, I'm not one, sure one pump with two nozzles on each side. Yes. Yes, those would be yeah. That's correct. So four nozzles total. Right. For the ones with diesel. Yep. Yep. Anybody else want to open up the public? All right, because this is just a special permit, we're going to open up to the public. I would ask that you state your name and address. Um, Do you want us to step back? Or? You can certainly sit there. Uh, right. relax. <laughs> so is there anybody <laughs> that would like to uh, make a statement? Yes, your name and address, please. Question. First name, Patricia. Last name, Dang's Nest. I live in Great Woods, Canterbury Circle. Okay. Um, I had a couple questions and a comment, actually. Have you thought about one way in and one way out? Like, no two-way access, you know, one way in. And out on Chestnut, or vice versa. Okay, Steve. I'm gonna defer no, we that have to not. You. We have not looked at that. Um, the one of the issues that you will have is that you could end up putting Chestnut or Shaker into D, even though I'm a C, because you're going to put all the traffic on one approach, and that means people who are now would turn left. Let's let's use the Shaker road driveway i have with the new numbers 30 no, 39 40 vehicles turning left from the shaker road driveway heading north well if you make it one way those people then become left turns from shaker from chestnut onto shaker um that's just one movement uh the analyses show that you know things will work fine even during the peak periods, we'll have we'll be able to operate. So no, I haven't looked at it. Okay. Well, it just looks like very narrow to me. I don't know how to read these plans, but to yep. me, it just looks like a very narrow entrance. It looks like it's gonna be hard for a car to come in and a car to go out. Do we have the dimensions of those yeah. entrance and exits? Yeah, yeah. So they're they're actually. That's actually one of the questions I asked today. Yeah, right. they're probably they are a lot wider. <laughs> no, they're wider than what you would. Thirty feet at the at the neck on Shaker Road and 30 feet at the, the neck on Chestnut and you know routinely you'd see 24 foot okay um, so they're not so wide to be you know confusing but I think they're generous enough to make it easy to get in and out okay as I said I live on Canterbury Circle and I don't have any young children but there's probably a good hundred hundred and fifty kids within that whole development and I'm just thinking this is going to be a magnet for the kids, which I don't have a problem with, but my husband and I tried to walk one day just to go to La Fiorentina, and we took our life in our hands trying to get there. Is there going to be a sidewalk put in maybe uh, from, from the development? Well, this is a bone of contention amongst this board in the town. Because these kids are going to be... I'm not disagreeing with you. We, we need a better sidewalk plan than what we have, unfortunately. That's, like, that's not up to these gentlemen. Um, that's a town matter, which we are you know, trying to address. Mm -hmm. um, that's been brought up on several other occasions for several other instances. But 
we can't ask them to do that because no, we can't no, ask. But that, that is a concern of ours. Like little um, bridges crossing. Them. Well, <laughs> I'd love to see a pedestrian way a bridge built over the road that would solve and all the problems. Line. But I can't ask. <laughs> them. No, you know, if they were offering that, great. But I don't think they are. <laughs> right. Yeah. So down which way? Towards the bike trail. Towards the bike trail. Okay. So right. Yeah. Right. I, I appreciate that, but I think she's yeah. she's, oh, she's more subtly right. Points well taken. Um, believe me. I wish there was more that we could do. Um, not to say that we aren't trying to get more. You know, they're going to be push buttons at the crosswalk, you know, at that the is, intersection for these kids to cross. Yeah, I'm just thinking. And the last thing is, people are horrible drivers anyway. So you're right. Some of these things are just going to be because that's where they are. But I have sat at that intersection many times and see the cars come down Chestnut, and they they don't stop. They just they don't stop. They'll go and they'll push the red till it's really red, and then you know they won't stop. Is, I don't know. Is there a light at the top of Chestnut? There is a warning flashing signal. that it's says a there's a red, light, yes, there red is, light coming. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. At, at beyond. You want to think beyond, 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 beyond the crest? Beyond the crest. Coming down over yeah. Chestnut, there's a sign that comes on. Well, it's always lit that says signal ahead. Yeah. And then when it's red, it says red signal ahead. Mm -hmm. Some of the bulbs are burned out, by the way. <laughs> so I make Robin, I noticed that today. <laughs> that is far enough back, mm -hmm. and that is put up there. Not because you can't really see the signal, but because of the crest of the curve. Exactly. Cars queued up on the hill. Yeah. You need the warning mm -hmm. to, to stop them. But that is there, um, and it's, it's needed. When okay. I saw that, I was grateful it was there. Anything else? No, thank you. All right. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, my name is Bob Hill. I live at 31 Oak Road Drive. Um, I also own property 305 Shaker Road and 301 Shaker Road and I'm a principal of United Transport also. Um, I can speak to the, the station itself, and it's probably one of the easiest stations for a tractor trailer to get in and out. <coughs> Excuse me. I disagree that uh, it, I don't think it's going to be an issue going left onto Chestnut Street only because the light is delayed coming down Chestnut Street, which would give traffic plenty of time to get out of there to get back into to Chestnut Street going east. And also because Shaker Road has a delay going <coughs> excuse me, left onto Chestnut Street. It gives the, the traffic coming out of that station plenty of time to get into the line of traffic going either south or north on Shaker Road. Mm -hmm. um, I can also speak to, uh, I've known Ellie Belcher and had associations with them for about 40 years now, and uh, they're certainly a quality company, and uh, I don't think anybody here needs to speak about the Davis family. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Anybody else like to speak? Yes, ma'am. My name is Athene Celeste. I'm at 10 Green Willow Drive in Long Meadow, um, in the Hebrew community, and believe me. Um, just several questions in listening to the presentation, which was very thorough this evening. Um, but on the traffic study, I didn't hear or uh, mention uh, anything about air pollution. And I know with pedestrian walkways, pedestrian uh, seating that's anticipated or dining outside, um, whether some thought was given to that with the increased traffic, particularly with queuing in the intersection. Also, um, a dark sky element for lighting, if this is going to be something that's operational 24 hours a day for neighboring surrounding areas, that might be problematic. <coughs> it might be something that uh, the engineers and architect may want to consider. Um, not seeing, having seen the plan, only what I can eyeball from here, um, there was mention about parking in front of the store. Um, I suspect that you'll have plate glass looking, uh, your attendants would be uh, able to uh, visually keep their eye on the pumps, whether they would be on a raised platform or whatever. But I would think that there would be some concern, oftentimes people fuel and then go into the convenience store. And I would be wondering whether there would be, uh, with your bailout lanes, uh, issues or concern for pedestrian traffic from the fueling station or pumps into the convenience store, whether that should be looked at. 
Also, um, I don't know if your traffic engineer has taken a look at the intersection and calculated the amount of accidents that may have occurred at the Chestnut Shaker Road um, vicinity. Um, I have to agree with Mr. Kingston um, hearing about a subway or potential uh, Dunkin' Donuts. That too, Dunkin' Donuts does have trailers coming in to uh, deliver their foodstuffs. And I think too, um, you get into the issue of, of, of Title V with the restaurant and food preparation. That takes a whole different skew and takes this project to a whole different level. And I just mentioned that as a courtesy for the planning board to keep that in mind. Also with liquor deliveries, uh, beer and wine that might be anticipated. Um, again, my remarks are simply for maintaining a quality of life. I don't, I'm not a resident of town. I live in Long Meadow. But I think um, we're in a prudent stage right now where these things, um, I think, obviously are going to be affecting the quality of life, not only for those that are immediate butters, but for the community at large. And I think you will have a, a very good uh, influx of traffic coming from Connecticut into um, this right over the, the line for purchasing uh, gasoline. And I think it'd be very, very increased. I know um, having uh, been employed by a competitor um, recently, that uh, there was traffic coming in from Connecticut into a Southwick station, uh, and the traffic was very, very uh, increased and very, very busy. And I bring in the noise, air pollution issue, um, again, with Title V that should be investigated. So, and also I didn't know, I know that you're going to be having uh, gasoline and diesel is uh, were you also going to be dispensing DEF? No. Fluid? No. no. Not, okay. a, not a dispenser. <clears throat> All right. Very good. Thank you. All right. To just a few, uh, as far as the smog issue or the noise issue, that's unfortunately that's not something that was in our bylaws. It's in our purview. So that's something we can't ask for. The next one, the lighting, I think they've presented us with a lighting. They've explained how it's going to be lit, um, what's going to be lit, and, and what the dynamics of that are going to be. As far as pedestrian traffic conflicting with the vehicular traffic, I think, unfortunately, that's that's part of this situation anywhere you go. I don't think this situation will be any more unique than another gas station, typical convenience store. Mm -hmm. So I think we're, you know, we're stuck with that. And finally, we talked about the Dunkin' Donuts issue or, or Subway issue. I think right now, you guys are just, we're talking about the gas station slash convenience store. If in the future they wanna go that route, they would have to come back before this board. Mm -hmm. And then those concerns as far as food preparation, things like that would have to be addressed at a later date. But right now what they're proposing is the gas station slash convenience store. Um, you know, not to it's not redundant, but if it does, does change, they will come back before us. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I've answered some of your questions. And um, the, we would at our round table Monday, the traffic officer was there. Rick Bates. Rick Bates. Rick Bates. Yeah, Rick. And uh, I we did discuss crash at the intersection. He said there's no real issues here. Okay. He said basically the biggest issue we had here was coming down chestnut from the east looking down towards the south on Shaker, the brush there was blocking the sight lines, which is why we went out and cleared it this okay. week. Uh, but that was really, the, his only concern was that sight line there. We said there is no real history of, of crashes here that is anything other than you would expect at okay. a signalized intersection. All right, is there anybody else before we, uh, yes, sir? I'm Ralph Mastrangelo. I've been a resident of East Long Meadow most of my life. The traffic situation in the, in the uh, rotary is a big concern for everybody. I think this would actually help alleviate some of the Connecticut traffic coming in to beat the prices on Saturdays, as we all know. Um, also, with your storage lockers, you know, the um, Coyote's Den and all that, they have, there's a lot of RVs, there's a lot of uh, plumbers, landscapers that store their, you know, <coughs> gas vehicles in there, and that would save them from coming to the center of town also. So I think if anything, the, the increase of traffic in that area might be minimal, but I think it would help the traffic in the center of town on a much larger scale. Yeah, that was a general consensus consensus today at our meeting, too. It would try to alleviate some of the rotary traffic. Of course, I think we're still going to be stuck with a, uh, Plus, a the tough... From, from all your, um, I guess it would be, the, uh, let's say, Kibbe Road, all that area, 
I mean, those people are just bypassing the town. They, they don't want to go right. to the center. And they're going into well, La Metal. There's really no service stations that are that convenient. So you're going into Springfield to spend your, your fuel dollars also. So you have a little bit of a captive audience there, too. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Nothing needs his address last name. Oh, um, Doc, can we have your, your last name and address? Mr. Angelo. Okay. Mr. Angelo. All right. Uh, yes, ma'am, in the back. In the address. Uh, hold on. Excuse me for once. And your address. Yes, please. Before you work your road. Thank you. All right. Sorry. All right. Yes, ma'am. Mary Ellen Fish, 259 Chestnut Street. I'm, I'm unhappy that it's going to be 24 7 because right now at least we get a break. Everybody closes up. <clears throat> mid, e mid evening or early evening and now we're going to have traffic all the time lights lit all the time and I do think too it's going to be a magnet for the kids to gather down there and I think it's going to be a big problem for the rail trail because a lot of times I see the traffic you get multiple cars stacked up because there's a lot of people going across the rail trail and they have to stop to let them cross. And with people trying to come out of a gas station yet and turning, it's, it's just going to make that much more a hazard for people. Okay. I'm also at the bottom of uh, Chestnut Street. If you're coming out from town on Shaker and you're at certain times of the day you want to make a left-hand turn up Chestnut, you have to go two, three lights before you get a chance to turn. Is there any possibility that there will be a turn light there for that traffic? Uh, that's something that's been raised. Um, right now, uh, the opinion is wait and see. Um, that's probably not the answer you're looking for, but unfortunately, we don't know what's going to happen based other than based on you know this gentleman's interpretation, our engineer's interpretation. So that option is still on the table. If the lens, we talked about timed lights for peak hours. So again, unfortunately, we don't have all the answers. You know, these gentlemen have a right to go there, but we also have to make sure that we take everybody's everybody's problems in or um, the word I'm looking for concerns, concerns. Uh, into consideration. <laughs> so, uh, so we're trying to do the best we can to incorporate. It, it's not a perfect site. We know that. But we're trying to do the best we can to try and incorporate and make everybody happy. Mr. Chairman, may Certainly. I just add one thing? Uh, her concern about the left turns southbound Shaker onto Chestnut. If we prohibit lefts out of our site, those le those people turning left out of the site, I have a fairly good percentage of them going straight on Chestnut. They're going to have to go up to the Shaker Road, turn right out of Shaker Road, then turn left mm -hmm. onto Chestnut. Because that's the only way they're going to be able to get back up Chestnut. Right. Anybody else? Uh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Um, Gail Morin, 226 Shaker Road. Okay. Right across the street. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> you can imagine how I feel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my concerns um, that you haven't completely addressed are, um, well, the 24-7 I'm not happy with. Um, like Mary Ellen had said, which are neighbors behind us, um, the lights are an issue. It sounds like you've addressed that. But also, and you said the dumpster, you know, there's times you can restrict <coughs> that too. You know, that would be good. I'd like to know what they are. But also, what about the deliveries? You know, there's, there's going to be delivery drivers too for, for bread and groceries and, and the gasoline and, you know, and, and at 24 7, uh, like you said, the least amount of traffic is in the, in the middle of the night, and that's like, or in the wee hours of the morning to get the groceries and whatever. And right now, like Mary Ellen said, we've lived there for 29 years, and it's been fine, and we like it. Um, but like she said, at 5.30 at night, everything's dark, and everything's closed, and it's done. And on Sunday and Monday, nothing is open. Uh, because most of the stores or anything that's open on Saturday, they take Monday off. So Sunday and Monday, it's completely quiet. And now, we've got 24-7 of traffic, of noise, of dumpster, of deliveries, of cars waiting with their boom boxes of waiting to gas until they turn off their engine. You know, I, mean, I can just imagine. No, I, I know. You know, all the things that, that now you're not going to get a break from and the fact that it's going to be lit also then, you know, Sunday, Monday, all the time, all the night. Um, so that's a 
All right, do you guys want to address the delivery issues? Well, I, I think you address the delivery issues. Uh, the 99.9% .9 of our, 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 our current grocery, beverage, and so forth suppliers are delivering during normal business hours. They don't want to deliver at 8 o'clock in the morning. We don't want them there at 8 o'clock in the night. We want them there present when our manager sort or our, our, our senior store manager is in stage to do the actual checking in with orders. Um, typically, um, that stuff is is all happening between the 7 and the 4 or 5 p.m. Uh, time frame. Where it's not, I, we can certainly force that. That would be good. Um, but, okay, so my other things are um, landscaping. Like you're putting all that in, which is great, and it's going to look pretty, and I appreciate that looking across the street instead of a darkness, which we like. That would good have something to look at. But will it, is there going to be underground watering or something where if no one takes care, if you put it in, it looks great for a little while, but then come the summer months and it's just a gas station, you know, who's responsible to take, there is going to be sprinklers to take care of that? So that it'll look nice continually. Um, and the other thing is the sign on the corner, do you have a height? requirement it can't be higher than you know this don't look like a nice little town we do and I, I, um, like no they do, we do have sign requirements I don't think they're asking for signs just yet that's correct um, only because I, I, I um, I'm not sure I, they're not sure which way they're gonna go so that will be happen they'll have to come before us with another with another application for signs explaining what the size is where it's gonna go whether it's gonna be lit whether it's not gonna be lit the setbacks so that tonight is not on the table but it will be in the future mm -hmm. let me just I'll, we'll finish with her and then I'll get to you <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. And, and not to interrupt you, as far as the hours, we don't have any zoning bylaws that regulate the hours, unfortunately. So if they want to go 24 and hours, there's nothing that we can do so about it's just it. A, it's because that particular gas station wants to go 24. Because I don't believe any of the other gas stations in town are 24 7. They don't. I believe that's their choice. So, you know, so it's their choice. So how. Right. You know, we're bound by the by the rules and regulations in our zoning book. Unfortunately, and I, I would love to tell you that we can make things up as we go. And unfortunately, we can't. Although people think we do, um, <laughs> but we do have a book that we do have to follow. So, I guess that's it. All right. Uh, hold on. Let me. Uh, Bill Morin, um, Two Point Six Road. When you started, the, when you started up the uh, the meeting with, um, with the with the residents in mind. And I don't think there's anybody here that if they lived where Len lives or, my, or myself or anybody else, you wouldn't want anything less or more of, <coughs> without depreciating your home. Um, yeah, yeah. You when know, I heard the yes, what I go, I mean, everything that we wrote, wrote down, well, maybe, maybe the hours won't be, maybe, 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 maybe. And it's like, no, 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 no. 20, 24 7, middle of night, the guy can go over and get a beer. And now, and now you've got to... Now well, no, no, you can't, no, yeah. you can't get a beer. Yeah, liquors, I think liquor has to be stopped at 11. Or there's, there's there, there are some time frames for that. Yeah, yes. There's restrictions on that and on Sundays. It's restrictions. Yeah, there are restrictions. I don't know exactly what they are, but I believe there are some restrictions. I thought it was 11, okay. Because I know Countryside has a similar situation. Um, yeah, I mean, like I say, I, I'm just concerned. It's, you know, it's, I'm trying to look at this in a, in a positive way. I mean, I mean, people have the right to build. I mean, that's, right. it's, it's their land. They can do what they want. But it's, you also have a, it's like, really? You gotta, you gotta put up a, a well, I, I understand. We're trying to balance yeah. everything. And it's, it's not easy sometimes, believe me. Um, you know, I, I don't know how to say it better than that, other than we're trying to find balance and make, and make everybody happy. Um, unfortunately, we don't always do, but we do try. So, yes, sir. I know you've been waiting patiently. I'm Glenn Fish. I also live at 259 Shelton. Okay. I have a couple questions and a couple suggestions, even. Uh, one of the things that was mentioned is you said that the basement level of this new building is going to probably have natural drainage as far as water table goes, meaning the basement will be at ground level, the floor of the basement. So the first floor of the gas station building will be approximately eight feet above that floor level, which will require grading to bring the property up to that level as far as the parking lot and all goes. And that's still going to be at least a foot and a half or more below uh, Shaker Road because you said there would be a drop-off to the pumps a little bit. Right now there's quite a drop-off. 
Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering where does that eight foot level bring you also in regard to the current Shaker, uh, Chestnut Street on the other side and, Sh and Shaker Road on this side, but Chestnut Street, you're going to be going downhill to go out of the station because there's not eight feet less there now. I don't think. Mm -hmm. I'm going to address that. I'm going to defer the. Well, uh, yeah, um, yes, the uh, driveway off of Chestnut <coughs> will come up uh, about from, from the road. It'll rise about two feet into the main part of the station. This will be a, a rise here about two feet? Yeah. Okay, because that wasn't pointed out for sure. And we're thinking too about your drainage because I know that there's water mm -hmm. table problems here. Yeah, and that's where... Um, so it'll be coming uphill here, so you won't have any water shedding berm there. You were just sort of mentioning about a water shedding berm right. here. Right. The, the round table discussion, um, there was concern that water might come down here right. and get so inside. Little, so this has just a, a one inch, one and down. a half inch, well, not even, just, just a speed lip curve. <laughs> no, like you might have it in a driveway. It's just a one and a half inch lip curve. And then we adjusted the grading here. It did some really, um, you know, fine level grading to make sure that all this gets captured before it gets out at the chestnut. Right. So the floor level of this actual building and parking lot area, is that uphill or downhill from the rail trail Up, surface? It's uphill. It's still uphill to the rail trail? No, middle. no. From here it goes up. Yeah, so we, you know, right now it's, it's very steep and so we're, we're lifting this up so that we can have a driveway here that's not too steep and this driveway is not too steep. We're just trying to, because okay. we have the, to meet these two roads. What is grade level of the first one of this building as far as grade level of the rail trail? How do they compare? Well, grade is, level is... Is gonna, this the rail trail going to come up to this? Or no, this we're not touching. The, we don't have to grade over the property line. The green is the property line. Yeah. So we're going to put this here in this slope from the back of the building down. It's going to slope to down, the property to line. The grade, down to, to the, the rail property trail. line, right. And down to the rail trail. The rail trail surface well, actually... Well, the rail trail's there's a buffer steps there. back here. The property line's here. So there's this buffer between you us and the rail trail. Buffer there. Okay, but yeah. you are, you'll have a small downgrade and then like a dip in there, so to speak. Yeah, we're gonna we're not changing. There's a natural drainage way through here, yeah. which we're not going to touch. So any any lifting we do here, we need to connect back to the existing grade at the property line. Okay. Uh, my suggestion, two suggestions are one is. Um, Instead of having your pumps straight across like you're drawing them here, a lot of stations found that if they angle them about 15 degrees, people coming through either way, especially with either super cab trucks or with pulling their boat trailer, can't make a sharp right turning parallel into a, parallel into a pump very well, but if you turn those pumps a little bit, they kind of flow in either way, trailer and all, and flow out through a lot easier. Yeah, this is... Um well, one, I think well, a lot of places where they do that, they don't have the room. But the other thing here is these are, are widely spaced pumps just to make that kind of maneuvering a lot easier. We have um, probably almost uh, 10 feet more between these pumps um, so that even a, even a larger vehicle can make that swing. Okay, well, I didn't know if maybe they could line up better if you also just angle them, you know, 10 or 15 degrees diagonal so that when they pull in, they're, they're kind of close yeah. to it. They don't have to be so far away. Well, like, like this is a, you know, a good sized site, so I really, we, we've done those. We've done plenty of those angled dispensers, yeah. and we only do it when we don't have the room yeah. well, to do it this way. They work good. The other issue which you have when you angle your dispensers is the side, in this case, that would be facing to the Shaker Road side. So now because of a blind spot for the cashiers, so they can't see what's going on on that side of the dispenser. Yep. And, uh, and trust me, uh, I haven't done this as long enough. People do some funny things with the gas nozzle, <laughs> trying to fuel their cars these so days. And you need to have it's tough uh, when you get a trailer and you hate to make right angle clear, turns and right. still try and get over yeah. close to your gas pump. <clears throat> sure, sure. Uh, part, of the, part of the design here, we're, we're looking to have our cashier facing right outside these plate glass windows so they can see for safety reasons at the pumps exactly what's going on out there. And part of that function is keeping those dispensers lined up. Yeah. Okay. The other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, the subject did occur, already came up about when I come down through here and I have to make a left to go up Chestnut Street and there's no turn light specifically for me. 
So we just sit there until, like you said, sometimes two and three lights. But in the meantime, the cars coming behind me don't usually think what they're doing. They pull up against my bumper, then realize they suddenly want to go around me to continue south, so they're trying to squeeze by me at the end. And they're always making this a two-lane highway anyways in the end. Well, since this is about 30 feet wide here by the looks of it, wouldn't maybe five feet off of here to widen the road just about five feet give them quite a safety margin when they're going around me because instead of scraping my mirrors off they could have a little more buffer and well that is a great idea we can't ask that for them that would have, have to, to be a town matter late, but you know while we're while we're bulldozing some dirt around here it sure yeah. would help well, I, I, again i'm not disagreeing with you um and, and we've talked that's one of the things we could talk about today and you know as as the applicants we, we can only ask so much of them we can't ask them to start redoing our intersections as a municipality we find out it's going to be a problem then we have to address it yeah. well um, I hope a traffic study will kind of bring that up and i know the uh, the semis when they come the same thing coming up uh shaker road and want to go this way they have to miss this by four or five inches with their front wheels in order for their trail wheel not to take the guide bumper off sitting out here if they're good, they make it, but sometimes I see the cars backing up and backing up and letting the, you know, the new drivers go <laughs> get around the corner because they don't make it, or maybe the snow bank got out a little too far and they just have no place to go, so it's, it's very tight for them, too, to turn. And those things are, as long as these aren't, you know, it isn't already done and finished, well, it's cheaper to do it now if, wow. uh, if the subject be brought up. And, Unfortunately, it's not that simple. You know. but. Okay, thank you All right, thank you. Is there anybody else? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mary Ellen Fish, are there going to be outside receptacles for trash? Yes. Yes, there are. Yes. And more than one? Uh, Not just at the pumps, but I mean over at the convenience sus store. suspect to be at the convenience store and at the uh, mm -hmm. patio right. area. Yeah. All right, so numerically four, five, six, okay. two. I'm looking at the plan right now. I can usually see myself placing 10. Okay. Because we get a lot of trash of people when they're walking, they, you know, they bought something somewhere and they're eating it and then they throw the wrappers down. If it's a soda bottle, they toss it. Yep. Even cars driving by. And with this kind of a business there, I know we're going to get a lot more trash to pick up. Also, people turning around in their driveway. I'm not, I don't really worry too much about people turning around in the end of it. It's the people that insist on driving in the driveway up to the garage. Okay. They Point noted. Turn right around me while I'm in the middle of my driveway going away. <laughs> um, Mr. Adams, did you have a comment? I saw your hand up numerous times. Bob Adams, Red and Driving. The driveway going out of the complex. Which one, sir? concerns me on Chestnut Street. Why is it the driveway moved down and made wider towards the bike path? Because so when you come out, you got a stop sign there. You take a left turn to go up Chestnut Street Hill or to cross the bike path. The general consensus was for this engineer, our engineer, uh, basically everybody involved was the farther away that driveway was from the bike path, the safer it would be for everybody yeah, on the bike path. Road. Well, I'm just I'm just I'm telling you what. Road. I worked here 45 years. You need to get, you know, like the gentleman said, the engineer, when they come out of the gas station with their coffee cup in their hand and they're going to work, they step on the gas and they don't think about the bike path. So a stop sign needs to be made at the bike's path and the driveway coming out, not to give them that initial start to get going. And I think it's something that the planning board should really look at. I don't care how wide the driveway is, as long as they can go out and take a left-hand turn and take a right-hand turn to go to Long Meadow. Now you guys be adverse the to The upper driveway could be just coming into the complex. One way. Mm -hmm. One way, one way out. <laughs> but that's something you really got to look at because I do agree with the engineer. Moving it back is going to give them a little more concern. There is a bike path there. And as you all well know, on the weekends, the bike path is heavily used, and we need to stop them. We need to stop them coming out of that gas station, right at the bike path. The stop sign there, if they want to go left or right to Long Meadow, but they stop, and then they proceed. And that's something this planning board should look at. It is a safety issue, 
and I'm surprised the police department didn't do anything about it. All right, Thank guys. you for your time. Thank Mr. you. Chairman, Certainly. Have comment. Um, having been in this business for a while, the police department is the only department that can determine whether or not a stop sign is, is appropriate. And they have certain guidelines from the state that they have to adhere to. Uh, they can't just put a stop sign in place they feel like it. <coughs> so uh, it's really up to the police department to determine where stop signs are appropriate. And they have to be approved by the state DOT to um, that they meet the proper criteria. Okay. You, you just can't arbitrarily do that. Excuse okay. me, Mr. Chairman, yeah. a stop sign on their property can be oh. approved by the Board of Select. Oh, on their property, yeah. Right. We right. have which that's proposed. where it needs to be, that's their that's property that's that stops All right. before All right. they get to the bike path. Mr. Adams, yeah. that has been proposed by these gentlemen, stop sign on their property. Right. All right. right. And the driveway should be closer to the bike path, not to give the people the incentive to step on the gas and go with their coffee in their hand or putting their credit card back in their pocket. Okay. I mean, something that you people should really be looking at, and you do have the authority to kind of work with that a little bit. Okay. Well, we've had several yeah. roundtable meetings yeah. on the general I consensus is, is, is where it is, taking all those concerns into, you know, okay. um, thank you for into effect. Thank you. Uh, Stephen, you want to add something? No, I was oh, going to say we're having a stop sign or just drive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is there anybody else who'd like to add anything? Um, I'm gonna, she got her hand up first. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Just um, in closing, I would just mm -hmm. hope that... Name and address uh, again? Uh, I'm again, sorry. Athene Selesky, 10 Green Willow Drive, Long Meadow. Um, having worked with this planning board in the past, I know that uh, you take your due diligence very seriously. Um, and also have the quality of your residents and those surrounding communities uh, at, at heart's best. And I would just recommend that those that are proposing uh, the plan try to maintain the good neighbor philosophy. Um, this is a very um, exciting project. I'm not sure whether I'm at for it or against it, but I'm here just as a concerned citizen in an open forum. Um, that again, um, let's keep in mind those people that are surrounding them, that it immediate abutters, um, and again, how this in, in fact will both positively affect the quality of life in Long Meadow and uh, East Long Meadow and surrounding communities, as well as not, and the compromises that have to be reached accordingly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I saw somebody else with their hand up. Okay, uh, Glenn Fish. Um, another concern I was the um, I know you have under lighting under the hoods of the gas pumps and that's not a problem that will be deflected to ground but there's bound to be a few parking lot lights well what happened across the street already um, in the uh, eating establishment that uh, he has parking lot lights and they did aim them down to try to get it off my property because if they're aimed wrong will they light up the whole inside of my house but then recently, I guess there was a robbery there, so they leave them on day and night 24-7 now. So I'm always lit up for my Christmas ch uh, cactus is blooming again already. It's <laughs> 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 so bad. Uh, I'm wondering if we could at least have a suggestion that they use parking lot lights that have a, a large hood, that they're horizontal and they face straight down because they don't have any distance lighting they need to light up. They can light their main light, but there are Instead of having these uh, types that you can just aim more or less up and down, well, they light too much of a sh uh, an area, but there's a, a type that's just flat, a surface light, but they do spread out just straight under themselves. And that would be nice to have that type a lot, of lighting. A lot of the proposed lighting in this is LED lighting, and there's a lot more control over LED lighting than what's in that parking lot right now. That's old school lighting. This is new school lighting. A lot more control. Um, if you see the lighting plan, you can see where it's... It's, all it's got specific yeah, it areas where it's aimed. And that is one of the things at the roundtable discussions. That is, in fact, brought up um, because it has become a bigger issue. You've got a lot of dialogue yeah, this, There's this a lot of dialogue LED on lighting is a lot more control. It's not my way off the site. A lot more control. Right. Those zeros yeah, those concerns end. have def definitely been addressed previously, um, yeah. but that is a, a very good comment. Yeah, and, and actually one other thing. Um, the way the lights used to be, you had to put a big, like a piece of metal, like you're saying, like a box. <laughs> But now the LEDs, they're small and they're in an array up in the light. So all you need to do is just focus them right in the light. You can put a baffle in <coughs> without having to you know, make some big piece of metal. You can do it within the fixture and it can baffle the light in any direction you want. It's, it's really, yeah, it's a big improvement. It, it's a huge improvement. 
All right, is there anybody else before we close the public hearing? All right, seeing none, do I have a motion? Or can I get a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Can I have a motion to approve project as presented, pending further, pending further discussion? Mr. Chairman, um, having not seen the updated uh, traffic plan and all, um, I would be more apt to make a motion to continue this to our next meeting. Um, we had a round table yesterday. The traffic study was redone overnight, but uh, in, in all honesty, other than what you've said tonight, I haven't had a chance to review it. I know Bob Parent hasn't had a chance to review it, and I, I would be um, I, not able to go forward uh, without sitting down for a couple hours at least with it. Um, right. Well, I, I think we could still entertain a motion and have fur further discussion and not take a vote until we, we have the information we need. I, have, I mean, I have a couple of open questions yet for the applicants. As do I. Uh, the first one would be, do we have a definitive set of plans tonight? Because I, I saw you just up there sketching on a plan to show where the canopy was going to be. Um, that canopy, you can't see it here, but it's on the, these plans. Okay. That's the rendering is not right. the so definitive plan. Are these, are these, yeah. This set of plans is a definitive plan that, that you have here. Um, I, the only thing it does not reflect is the one additional parking space. Oh, a basement. It, no, it has, has the basement. basement. It has a basement calculation. Okay. Yeah. The okay. nine, uh, plans were distributed yesterday and filed that here. Yeah. At the round table, Robin suggested one more parking space. We haven't added that in, but other than that, this is a definitive set. Okay, I just, yeah. just it's on file. Clarify that because we, I've seen several sets so far, and I'm not. They've been evolving. Sure we we finally have something. A definitive that set. Yes. Is, is as close as it can be. The other, just my clarification, um, you're showing two underground tanks. Mm -hmm. uh, are those like segmented so that you can get your different grades in there? Yeah, they're two. Um, they're double wall. Right. Uh, I assume you'll be double wall fiberglass. And uh, yeah, one of them will be a compartment tank split with super and diesel, and one will be all regular. Okay. <coughs> because when you mentioned diesel, I'm suddenly hearing three grades. Yeah, and one of the tanks gets split. Uh, okay. The regular tank's the highest, you know, all right. by itself. That's where most of the gas. Right, goes. and then you split the diesel and the okay. super. Okay. Again, just clarifying that the plan that we have, which shows two tanks, is, is the accurate plan. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. I missed something. Did you get a motion to? I'm not. I'm not going to myself. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> George suggested you get a motion and then we'll hold off. The attorney's right on top of that. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that motion. Give me a further discussion. <laughs> yeah. So. How do you want to handle this, Mr. Chairman? Uh, I would, I guess at this point, I'd probably entertain a motion to continue because I have some concerns too. Well, the, the hearing is closed. The, the public, public hearing, hearing is closed. public hearing is right. closed, right. No, I'm talking about Conti continue the, the, final uh, the, 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 fi the final motion. Correct. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'll, I'll make a motion to continue the discussion. Okay. Um, I don't know that we can no, do that. We no. can't do that. You didn't close the public hearing. You we, closed we the did. public's portion of the hearing. No, we closed the public we closed hearing. The public hearing. We closed mm, the public no. hearing. That's why I was that's asking. That's how it works. Yeah, that's All right. Right. Yeah. We closed discussion. Right, the public. Right. The, no, so we we closed the public hearing. Okay. The public's discussion. Right. We, Correct. The public hearing okay. is closed. The, the hearing is closed. Right, I know, she, she's different. We now, okay, we now move into taking action. Okay. Which is di separate from the public hearing. Did, you, did they do a motion to close the public hearing? Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. I thought it was for the public. I think that's what. And maybe that's. She doesn't have it in her minutes. I'm just trying to help. You okay. To I opened to the public. We closed to the public. Now we're back before the board, entertaining a motion and right. further discussion. But right. So you didn't. Just closing close the, the public. No, no, no. Right. No, no. That's no, still open. We're still. Robin, we're still discussing. Hearing, oh yeah. The hearing is closed. We are no longer hearing the public. public. The hearing is closed. The public. Correct. Right. All right. Yeah. Our actions are still to come. The actions right. are not part of the public hearing. Right. They're part of the public meeting. Deliberation. Right. That Deliberation. follows the public he hearing. Okay. okay. Yep. Just need Thank you. So. <laughs> you were going to make a motion. No. So I'll make a motion to continue our discussions uh, until 
the uh, it'll be the twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. At what time? Mm. Yeah. That's good. Seven fifteen. How big is Spoleto's going to be? Not big. The Seven one that is is the nine mm. zoning bylaws before it. Why don't we get these guys up before that? Because I think if all the answers will be. you want to start your meeting at? Start at five thirty, if we have to. Yeah. Sure. Because you have three special permits. So. I mean, public meeting. You want start to do start it the meeting at five thirty, and we'll put them. These guys on at five thirty. Five thirty. We'll be here when you tell us. Okay. Um, I've got a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right, I'm not ready to vote on it yet because I want to address some of my own concerns based on my meeting with the superintendent. Um, I love the plan. I think it's great. I think it'll be an asset to the town. However, I've got some genuine concerns for safety traffic. And speaking with the DPW today, I respectfully disagree with your C and D in your, in your 945 and your 853. So I would like, again, to sit down with our DPW director because he had some great ideas. Um, I don't think we have all the information we need tonight. Do you have a copy of the report yourself? Okay? I do have a copy. The I original. did go over it tonight. I got the report. I believe that was generated. Want me to do the other one? The 853 one? Yes, we have, we'll give you an update. Too. I have an update. Okay, I read what was given to me yeah, today. I have yeah. an update okay. for you. That came because, right. because, because okay. Bob asked him to do things since the round table. Okay. And I think those are helpful. Yeah. Well, I understood a lot of it. I'm, I'm not, I didn't understand Mark, all of it, but. No, he's got it right here, but I'll get an email to you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Coming. He brought nine copies. So. Well, um. Bob, um, yeah, Bob, Rick, Doug, me, Michael, yeah. Here's 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I'll do it anyway, so I have your records. All right, at the very least, I'd like to do another roundtable with all the parties involved. Okay. Um, so, you know, we can probably finalize all everybody's ideas, get everybody on the same page. Um, so I'd like to do that in the next two weeks before we get back here. So a lot of the questions that we have as a board, questions that were presented tonight from the public, we can try to answer as many of those as we can. Um, I granted it's not a perfect scenario. We know that, but we still have to make it work for everybody, including you. Yeah, appreciate so, that. And we're, right. we're willing to participate. Okay. I've got a motion made in a second to continue the meeting two weeks from tonight at 530. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks for all your uh, Thanks, James. Well, wow. it's going to be a nice you. project. Uh, it's going to be great. We yeah. just, you know, we got to cross our T's and dot our I's. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. why we get the big bucks. That'll give us another opportunity. I mean, these guys do this for a living. They're very strong on the safety issue on the right. Yeah. So we'll have to sort it out. Yeah. Yeah. And we will. Yeah. Yeah. No question about it. Oh, yes. Thank the motion for a five-minute recess. Aye. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five minutes. Okay. Don, we're going to take five. Because I've seen because there's still, like it said, if you get your dealer's license, um, storage on site, none. No storage Strictly on site. office on site. Just the office on site. That's all. I, I think this is one of the prerequisites you need from us to get what you need from the federal government. Right. In order to apply, I have to get you guys on board. Okay. So that's really the first step. George? Um, as, as long as there's no inventory on site, um, I have no no objection to it. Um, be, be aware that uh, people do notice if there's inventory on site, as other businesses in town have discovered. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not saying anything about you personally. I'm just you know yep. making sure you, you're fully aware of that. Other than that, I have no issues. Is there a report from the police department in there? You said I don't know. No, no. No. no, I just want to make sure that okay. they're we've spoken with the police. Okay. No, I'm I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Sandro? So I'm good. For legal business? Yep. Okay. Ralph, you're all set? Yes, I'm all set. Thank you. All right. Can I have a motion to approve? Thank you. Well, let me get this right. Insight sales, eleven over drive. So moved. moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You're all set. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. You're Thank you for your patience. Thanks, Yeah, let's see you again. Good year. And you too. Nice try. You don't like pouring in place. Yes, I definitely do. So you're not going to forget me, are you? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> Thank you. All right, next up we have a request for waiver of site plan for Fashionista Designs, 41 Allendale Drive. How you doing? Good. Nice seeing you. Request for saver of, uh, waiver of site plan. Uh, property owner is Wendy Ladanis, uh, 41 Allendale, Allendale Drive, East Long Meadow. Phone numbers are listed here. Uh, name of proposed business is Fashiontania Designs. Owner of business is Wendy Ladanis. 
property owner is the same, property address is the same, uh, property district is B, proposed hours operation, computer work, 10 hours a week. Number of employees including owner, one. Uh, date of last parking plan is blank. Summary of business, uh, I do craft fairs. Uh, something varies. Servants, wreaths, oh, uh, uh, um, scarves, wreaths, candle warmers, and the application has been signed and dated February 26, 2014. It sounds like another home office. Yes, it does. Um, Ralph? I believe 41 Allendale already has um, either one or two waiver of site plans, so um, I would <coughs> just like the board to make sure that she understands that even though this is an approved use, that the 20% square footage in the house covers all three businesses. Each one's not individual, gotcha. so we're not looking point. at 60%. It's 20% total. All right, so I think we should put that in the approval letter. Robin? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, George? Yeah, fine with it. Sandra? Okay. I'm good. All right. All right, so. I would make a motion to approve the waiver of site plan review for Fashion Ista Designs 41 Allendale Drive. I'll second that. Uh, with the language that we discussed. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, next up is request for a waiver of site plan review, Eastbrook Landscaping, 20 Linwood Road. Uh, request for waiver of site plan review, property owner is Andre Sample. Uh, owner's address is 20 Linwood Drive, East Long Meadow. Phone numbers are listed. Name of proposed business is Eastbrook Landscaping. Uh, owner of business is Andre Sample. Uh, business owner's address is P.O. Box 965, East Long Meadow. Property address is 20 Linwood Road, East Long Meadow. Property district is A. Allowed use is yes. Proposed hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Number of employees, including owner, is one. Summary business operation, landscaping, lawn care, owner stores, all equipment in Hamden, Mass. at family company, family's company. Home use for office uh, only, computer and phone. No clients, no commercial vehicles are stored at the home. Uh, the application has been signed and dated February 27th, 2014. Sounds like it's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll certainly ask for comments. I can vouch for the parking. Ty? I have no comments. Ralph, George? Mm -hmm. right. Sounds like uh, the home office. Okay, can I get a motion? I move to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and then we have a street taking, uh, Fenway Lane. Uh, I have a, le a letter here dated uh, to the planning board. Uh, dear Planning Board, I hereby request that the Planning Board make a motion for the Warren article regarding street taking of Fenway Lane. Thank you, Charles Richard. All right, so in essence, I think he's, rather than him presenting, he's asking us to present it. The motion. Has he met Frank's? Frank hasn't done the inspection All right. yet. Which you, I'm assuming he will do before the town meeting? Yes. All right. So he's basically just asking us to represent it rather than himself. Um, right. Granting all the criteria have been met before town meeting. Um, why? Why? Um, I think because he has the right, I guess. I don't think it's unusual no. to do to do that. As long as he's met all our criteria, he's met all the yeah. town's criteria. Um, I mean, my suggestion would be um, we can agree to do it based on um, the road being ready to be taken. Right, which we will. Um, I don't want to present something or... Uh, be brought up at town meeting as a petitioned article um, through the planning board if it's not ready to be taken. It, so it won't be. It would be pulled. It would be changed. It would be amended. Give oh, yeah. Language to him. Oh yeah. He, he understands, understands that, that completely. That if Frank says no. The road is not ready to be taken. Right. We can't that represent not something that's not accurate. Yep. I completely agree with that. I mean, I don't have a problem with us representing it as long as it's been represented correctly. That is, in fact, done to DPW standards and our standards. Fair enough. All right. Uh, can we wait until DPW takes a look at it? We can, we have to, um, but we can, you know, for argument's sake, we can make the motion get approved tonight. And if, if, if Mr. Richards, def, you know, defaults on his end of it, then we will not represent it at town meeting. 
um, we've got to make sure that he meets all the criteria before we can present it to the town, i.e. being DPW inspections and sign-offs. Yeah, this is basically just saying that the planning board will provide yeah. the motion at town meeting. How, any idea roughly how far in advance the town meeting? Usually about six us? weeks. Um, for a conversation thing. Refer this to that time then and let him know six weeks in advance whether we'll do it or not? You can. I mean, you know, for argument's sake, the town meeting is in May. He wants to get it approved, or not get it approved, he wants it to be on the warrant article. But the road may not be done right, right now because asphalt plants are not open. He may not be able to do any landscaping. So I think he's just. As a petitioned article, he would have already had to have put it on. He did. So it's already on the warrant. And he's what he's just asking us is if we'll represent it. And uh, my only suggestion would be, why don't we wait until see if the road's been done before we tell them, yes, we'll do it. I, I tell them we have no problem with it, but... I, I, I'm just uncomfortable not having heard DPW's um, take on it, given some of the um, history of Fenway Lane. All right, I'm not disinclined to agree with the presentation from the planning board however I don't want to wait till the last minute because I know what happens at the last minute um, what's the difference if we wait till the last minute I know sometimes we've had meetings before the town meeting if we approve it tonight or approve it then I don't really see the difference I do I do see everybody's concerns if the road's not done we're simply not going to present it I mean there's no there's no gray area if the road is not done we will not present it so but I you would still have the option I mean being a petitioned article I don't I think that him. I think that negates his option Unless he has all the signatures, of which he doesn't. No, he does. He does for us to accept it or him to present it? No, he has filed the request for a warrant article. He had the, the um, article proper signature. signatures. He has asked that the planning board do the motion at town meeting. That's all Can he's asking he for. Can he still do it? Yes. But he's, you, the planning board and DPW would stand up and say that they're, it's not ready and they vote against it. Um, anybody has a right to but he doesn't know how to do a motion he doesn't want to do a motion and that's why I called Jim Shields and asked him and he said it was perfectly fine if that's something the planning board wanted to do that's that's fine if he doesn't want to get up here that's fine um, but if it's not if it's not paid it's not ready I see wait, 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 till, it, wait till it's done no, not even do anything now nothing okay do we need a motion on the motion mm -hmm. okay then I think that's the general consensus we're gonna wait yeah, um, to get further along. Yeah, why waste I, time? Yes, I agree. Yeah. yeah. All right, then that's that's the course of action we will take. Okay. All right. Um, what else we have here? Building inspector letter for Graziano. Have, this, have you sent this? Or? Yeah. I didn't think so. Uh, do you want me to read this into the record? Uh, only. Yeah. It's it's. I put it together for your signature. If it's what okay. you want, then fine. If not, then we won't. Uh, I guess read read let's read it into the record and we can discuss it. That? Okay. Let's um, do things by the book. <clears throat> uh, there's a letter to uh, Daniel Hellier, uh, Building Commissioner, com commissioner uh, regarding Graziano Gardens summarized violation of zoning bylaws. Dear Mr. Hellier, please be advised that the Planning Board believes that the property on Maynard Street identified as parcel ID 35-12-C owned by Christopher and Donna Graziano is in violation of the East Long Meadow zoning bylaws as it pertains to frontage as defined in the zoning bylaws. Therefore, please consider this uh, in an official complaint. To support this complaint, the board provides you with a picture of the parcel. The board requests that you investigate this apparent violation and submit your findings to them in, in a written report within 14 days pursuant to 7-10D of the zoning bylaws, very truly yours, Michael, Michael Carabetta, Chairman of the Planning Board. Uh, right. CC Board of Select. <clears throat> Obviously, we all know there's somewhat of an ongoing dispute yeah. of what's right and what's wrong. Um, Jim Council has suggested this plan of action. Um, I guess our 30-day window, our window of opportunity has come and gone, so this is, would be a new window of opportunity. If we disagree with them, then we go before the Zoning Board of, Appeal, the zoning board of Appeals and explain you know, the letter, where, where we're coming from and, and what we're hoping to achieve. So um, I think that's where we are, but I'll certainly entertain everybody's thoughts and suggestions. I, I like the letter, I think you should, you should do it. Okay. And um, if it is delivered tomorrow, then that's 14 days is one day after our next meeting. Is it, is it 14 days or 14 business days? 
14 days. So okay. it's 14 days. All right. Okay. So if we haven't heard by our next meeting, um, we'll have to follow up um, with both the in, both the uh, zoning enforcement officer and the board of selectmen. Okay. Board of appeals. Well, board of appeals. Well, but I think <coughs> if if we get no response, if we get a response that we don't agree with, if okay. we get no response, then. Um, yeah, I guess we go to the ZBA, but I think we also keep, need to keep the Board of Selectmen informed of uh, our actions and timing on this. Agreed. Ralph? I'm okay with it. Yeah, I agree with that. Ty? Okay. Yeah. Sign roll? Yep. All right, then we'll sign the letter as written, and uh, we'll present it when we'll forward. All right, and then last, probably not last, but um, Arbor Kids letter. Thank you. Uh, letter to Jason Robertson, Elm Street Development Services, LLC, 20 North Main Street, East Long Meadow, Mass, 01028, regarding Arbor Kids, 128 Industrial Drive. Dear Mr. Robertson, this letter will reiterate the discussion the Planning Board had with you regarding the daycare center renting outfields and courts to the public for a fee. As the Board explained, your application to the Planning Board was for daycare center for uh, the board was for a daycare center for before, during, and after school programs with summer camp anticipated. As you are aware, child care is the care of a child during the day by a person other than the child's legal guardians, typically an ongoing service during a specific period, such as parents' time off. The board approved the site plan and the use as a daycare center as it is permitted by statute in any district in any municip municipality. However, renting out a place designed and equipped for the conduct of sports for a fee is considered a commercial recreational facility and the use as such is not permitted in this district and is not permitted as an accessory or incidental use by a daycare center. Planning board allowed Julie Simansky to use a portion of your building for her dance studio known as Dance Inc. as she is considering a teaching school which is allowed in the district. The use as a recreational facility is specifically defined in the zoning bylaws and is not allowed use in the industrial garden district as shown in table 3-1 land use classification. If you have any questions do not hesitate to contact the office for further assistance very truly yours Michael Carabetta uh, Chairman of the Planning Board, CC Building Commissioner, Board of Selectmen. <coughs> Title, start with you. It's not allowed use. Uh, they weren't approved for it, so uh, they can't do it. Okay. Sandra? Second that. Ralph? Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. As do I. All right, so I'm going to sign the letter, and we're going to forward it on to all the uh, parties that need to be notified. All right. And, and who, who's CC'd on that? Uh, the building commissioner, board of selectmen, and uh, obviously the applicant. Okay, good. All right. All right, I don't see anything else on our agenda. Robin, is there anything else that I am missing? No. Is there anything anybody would like to add before minutes. we adjourn? Do we have? Review of minutes, February 11th. I'm a little lacking in that department. Did anybody look at them? I looked at them. I read them. I saw no corrections that were needed. All right, I'm well, not ready. I can't remember if I did that. I have uh, not had a chance to look at them, and I'd like to. All right, so okay. I guess we're not going to be able to. Yep. All right, so if there's nothing else, um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. See that, Don, I gave you worst case.